chair of the Prince George's County Planning Board. And the planning board is now in session for Thursday, July 30th, 2020. We do have some preliminary items here today, so I'm going to take a moment. Um, but before I guess before I do that, um, I would say an abundance of caution resulting from the spread of um, COVID-19. This is the planning board's 18th, that's a lot of months, 18th virtual meeting utilizing online phone and video capabilities. During these challenging and unprecedented times, the Commission remains steadfastly committed to promoting a safe and healthy environment for our public, our applicants, our stakeholders, and staff, while continuing business operations to propel Prince George's County forward. I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone of the participation guidelines for our hearings. And I don't know if we have citizens, oh yeah, we have a lot of people signed up. So speaker pre-registration and pre-submission of comments and exhibits is required. All participants must pre-register and all materials must be submitted by 10 a.m. on the Wednesday before the planning board meeting as shown on the screen. We have announced this for month after month after month, so I wanna make sure everybody gets it. Pre-registration and pre-submission of exhibits is required by 10 a.m. on the Wednesday before the um, planning board meeting. Registered speakers and presenters connecting through a computer, tablet, or smartphone can join the meeting with the link provided by the, uh, via email from the Planning Board Office. Online registered participants may be prompted to install GoToMeeting software in order to participate in the process. Registered speakers may listen or participate in the a meeting using a phone line, or participants may dial in the call-in number provided via the email. We ask all participants to mute your phones when not speaking. Please do not put your phone on hold. To eliminate audio feedback, only one connected device with sound should be in the room at the same time. And of course, the public may continue to watch planning board meetings streamed live, or if you wish to become a per person of record, you may sign up on our online web form. Please note the screen for instructions. Um, I'm going to have some other announcements, but before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead with two items. First of all, we have item 3C, which is a Parks and Recreation Budget Adjustment Transfer. I see we have four planning board members on the line, um, so, um, well, me, and then we have um, Commissioner Washington, Vice Chair Bailey, and Commissioner Geraldo, so um, President accounted for. If we can go with item 3C, the Parks and Recreation FY21 Budget Adjustment Transfer. Okay, Ms. Ford? Succinctly, because you, you know we're ready to make a motion, but if you can say what you need to say. All right. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. For the record, Melissa Ford, Budget Manager for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Before you today is a request to perform an adjustment to our FY21 adopted budget. Specifically, the department is requesting to realign operational units and repurpose resources within our current structure to better align our workforce complement and meet organizational needs and streamline some of our business processes. The memo before you, before you provides the uh, level of detail associated with the realignment. Um, and this request does not seek additional dollars, just the approval to transfer and share funding between our divisions and fund structure. Overall, we are requesting the approval budget transfer totaling $2,900,104 and the reassignment of three positions from the Recreation Fund into the Bar Fund. Question. Approval, Madam Chair. Thank Commissioner you. Washington. Was it? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Um, Commissioner Geraldo, I didn't hear you. Was that an aye? Too? Aye. Okay, thank you. The ayes have it 4 0. Um, and the next item we have on our agenda, thank you, Ms. Ford. Um, the next mm -hmm. item on our agenda is uh, the draft minutes from the planning board meetings of July 16th and 23rd of 2020. Is there a motion? I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner ba Vice Chair Bailey. I think um, Commissioner Washington seconded it, um, and I'm sure there's no dis is any discussion. Madam Vice Chair, but I. Commissioner Washington, I. Um, Commissioner, but I. thank you, Commissioner Geraldo. Okay, thank thank you so much. We have two minutes before the rest of our agenda commences. So you have two minutes to do whatever. Okay. Well, I guess they want us off, okay? You know what? How can you get stuff?
Um, I just gave the opening remarks for the people. I just want to reinforce one thing. We thank everyone for their flexibility as you join in on our 18th virtual planning board meeting this year that, been, that have been going on since um, March. Um, the one thing we will remind everyone is um, that all participants must pre-register and any exhibits must be submitted by 10 a.m. Both of these must occur by 10 a.m. on the Wednesday before the planning board meeting as shown on the screen. We've announced it repeatedly and I just want to make sure everyone remembers. Um, okay, so with as all, and then we thank everyone for their flexibility and cooperation and support. As always, we commence our meetings with a moment of silence for those who have passed on in the intervening week. So first of all, in our own park and planning community, we lost two employees. One is Andrew Johnson, who was a longtime golf instructor at Paint Branch um, Golf Course and who taught youth during the junior golf and first tee programs. Um, and we also want to remember Alice Thomas, um, who worked at Central Area uh, Maintenance, who went in for, for one surgery and um, didn't make it. So we want to keep those commission employees in our thoughts and prayers. Um, in, in Prince George's County, we lost an attorney, Michael Hethman, um, who appeared before this board regularly years ago and, um, and when most of this board resumed again in 2011. And he, uh, he represented um, citizens ably and um, a, he was in a car accident that was reported on Route 301 and Cro I think it was Croom Station Road. Um, last Saturday. He was senior counsel for Immigration Reform Law Institute in D.C. Um, it was a two-car collision. So we want to remember Mr. Hethman and his family in our thoughts and prayers and thank him too for his services to the citizens. We want to remember the growing um, victims of the widespread co um, coronavirus in Maryland, um, 86,285 confirmed cases and 3,347 deaths. In Prince George's County, we have 22,497 cases and 734 deaths, deaths, all of this as a result of last evening. We also want to remember Dr. Joseph Costa, um, a young age 56, who was the chief of critical care at Baltimore's Mercy Medical Center. He was on the front lines taking care of COVID patients and he died uh, on July 25th in the same ICU that he supervised and where he cared for others. So um, throughout the world, we lost Regis Philbin, um, Emmy Award winning TV icon and host of the long running morning show Live with Regis and Kathy Lee and the game show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and so, and so much more. He held the Guinness World Record for the most hours on US TV with over 16,000 hours. Mo Gaba, age 14, Baltimore Ravens super fan who was blind since nine months old, battled cancer four times, and was the first person to announce an NFL draft pick written in Braille. Mimi Jones, age 73, who also was a civil rights champion. We are losing our civil rights champions and people need to step up to the plate. In 1964, at age 17, uh, she joined other activists uh, in a swim-in at a whites-only pool in St. Augustine, Florida. There was an iconic photo of her um, when, when they, people protested and were outraged that a black person would dare get in the, food, in the pool, just like Dorothy Dandridge when she stuck her toe in the pool, and so they threw acid on her. And there was an iconic picture of her screaming when the acid was thrown on her. Um, but that was one of the events that led to um, President LBJ lining, um, signing the Civil Rights Act of 1964 the, the very next day. Olivia de Havilland, age 104, a two-time Oscar-winning actress and the last surviving star of Gone with the Wind. John Saxton, age 83, actor in Nightmare on Elm Street and alongside Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon. Elvira Wayans, age 81, matriarch of the Wayans family, mother to 10 children, five of whom are actors and comedians and others. Um, Damon Marlon, Sean, Kim, and Keenan Wayans. Peter Green, guitarist and co-founder of Fleetwood Mac. Um, Benjamin uh, Macapa, age 81, two-term uh, president of Tanzania. Um, 
Andrew McGaney, age 95, the anti-apartheid activist who was imprisoned with former South African President Nelson Mandela. John Blake, age 59, former University of Oklahoma football player and coach, two-time Super Bowl champ, um, defensive line coach of Dallas Cowboys. Carlton Hasserig, age 54, former NFL Pittsburgh Steelers player and who was the only, also the only wrestler in the NCAA history to win six individual championships. Renee Carter, age 92, TV host and columnist. She was the wife of Mercury 7 astronaut M. Scott Carpenter and the last surviving member of the Astronaut Wives Club, and she worked with WTOP. Maurice Petty, age 81, NASCAR Hall of Fame engine builder, the brother of racing legend Richard Petty. Um, helped Richard and father Lee Petty win a combined seven NASCAR championships and nearly 200 races. Richard Wallace, the guitarist, with the Grammy Award winning Mighty Clouds of Joy, Malik B, one of the founding members of The Roots. Irene Poland, age 96, who was the widow of Abe Poland, and together with her husband, her late husband, they owned the Washington Wizards, formerly the, uh, the Washington Bullets, the Washington Capitals, and the Washington Mystics. Um, also, we want to remember any of you um, who've keep you in our thoughts and prayers, any of you who suffered a loss in your families or the loss of a, another loved one or friend, if we may have that moment of silence, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. So today is July 30th and we are closing out National HIV Awareness Month, National Parks and Recreation Month, Bereaved Parents Awareness Month, and Social Wellness Month. As I've said before, um, um, what well, actually on July 30th also, in 1729, the city of Baltimore was founded. Um, in 1965, President Lyndon Baines Johnson signed a bill that was very important to many of us, and that would be the Medicare bill. In 1975, Teamsters President Jimmy Hoffa disappeared on July 30th, 1975, and on July 30th, 1982, seven years later, he was declared dead. I will tell you that July seems to be a big food month. It is National Hot Dog Month, National Picnic Month, National Grilling Month, National Baked Beans Month, National Watermelon Month, National Ice Cream Month, National Deli Sandwich Month, National Blueberries Month. No wonder I'm having a problem fitting in my clothes. And today, July 30th, also is National Chicken and Waffles Day, National Chili Dog Day, um, National Cheesecake Day, and it is also International Day of Friendship. We do not get to see our friends too much right now during this COVID period. And I want to give a shout out to my colleagues who I consider my friends and my colleagues who are here who I consider my friends and say happy International Friendship Day. And finally, I'm closing out with a happy heavenly birthday to my beloved mom who is celebrating her birthday up there. Look, and look what they did today as a surprise. So. Mom, I love you. I know you're looking out for us and help and keep guiding us and get us through this last planning board day before our August recess. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, fine. One more thing I want to say. Census, it's a very important because we will not, by the time um, we resume in September, um, we will have finished the self-response um, responses for census, which will end in August. And then the, the Census Bureau will be sending folks out. So right now we're at 64.3% um, in Prince George's County, a 66.6% .6 response time in, in the state. It's imperative that we complete our census. Again, we thank everyone, all of you who have participated in all of these hearings, any of these hearings, for, um, for your flexibility, cooperation, and support as we continue to keep our planning functions moving forward in a safe fashion during our new normal. We ask that you make every effort to stay safe, to look out for one another, to stay strong, to stay, res to stay resilient, to stay woke, and remain ever hopeful as we strive, strive to get through all of these challenging times together. Thank you. With that, I'm going to uh, move to the consent agenda. Um, we have a uh, Items 4A through 4D. I have no one signed up. Is there a motion to approve the, the um, consent agenda? Items 4A through 4D. 
Yes, Madam Chair, consideration of the records for the uh, move approval of items 4A, 4B, 4C, and 4D in accordance with the recommendation of staff. Okay. Second. Um, we have a motion and a second. Is there any uh, discussion? Um, uh, Commissioner Washington? Mm. Uh, aye. Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. Okay, thank you. I should have announced earlier, and I'm, I'm, I was remiss in doing this, but we are here in um, um, conducting these hearings. I'm here with the planning director, Andre Checkley. I'm with the planning board administrator, Jess Jessica Jones, our technical hearing writer, um, Marie Proctor, and also um, Lee Kratka is here too. Um, the IT expert who's keeping this going, man, give a shout out to Ryan Cron, who's up back there working this. Um, Kenny Flanagan, who's over here, a senior planner who's working it, um, the PowerPoints and whatnot. And I know that James Hunt, the chief of development review, is working it too. And we are joined by our counsel today, um, senior counsel Peter Goldsmith. So he is our lead attorney for the day. And we haven't seen you in a while, Peter, so good to see you. Um, with that, I'm going to go to item five, which is the detailed site plan 18047, which is the College Park Marriott, and it's just a request for a continuance. Um, I just want to make sure we have Mr. Burke. We had to mute yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. Ms. Okay, Mr. Burke. Madam Chair, this is Tom Burke. I am present. Wonderful. Ms. Kozak? Um, good morning, Ms. present. Okay, good. Mr. Horn? Good morning, President. Okay, Mr. Burke, we have a request to continue to September 24, 2020. Uh oh, we lost Mr. Burke. Okay, Mr. Burke. Okay, Mr. Burke. Good morning, Madam Chair. Can you hear me now? I can. We can. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the planning board. For the record, this is Tom Burke with the urban design section. Uh, I before you is detailed site plan DSP 18047 for College Park Marriott. The applicant has requested a continuance uh, to the September 10th planning board date to address uh, report, uh, needed departures. Was it September 10th or September 24th? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. That's September 24th. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Horn? Uh, yes. Good morning, Madam Chairman. Uh, Arthur Horn on behalf of the applicant. Yes, ma'am. We have to de file a departure for the parking and loading area. So uh, we just... Uh, we actually have the application ready to go in now, so we can move it to September 24th. That'd be great. Thank you. We have no one else. I'm signed up. Um, is there a motion to continue to September 24th? Move approval, Madam Chair. The request to continue to September 24th. Commissioner Geraldo, second. Geraldo okay. Motion by uh, Commissioner Washington, seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Madam Vice Chair. Vote aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Vote aye. The ayes have it for a zero. Thank you. Um, we have item 13, which is the draft resolution for um, PGCPB number 2020-129, Amazon.com services. Um, I, ju I just need a motion. Move approval, Madam Chair. Commissioner Washington. Second. We have a, we have a motion and a second. Um, um, I should have asked this question. Mr. Burke, there was nothing to change, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, um, so I'm going to call for the vote. Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, moving on to item seven, we have um, item seven and eight are really companions. The first being the waiver of rules of procedure in order for us to entertain the request for reconsideration of um, preliminary plan of subdivision 4-05027 Willow Ridge Estates. That is the request for the waiver. You need four people. Um, and I'm going to turn right, make sure we have everyone that we need. Um, and, and before we um, go too far with that, I'm going to turn to Mr. Hunt. I know we have um, Mr. Braden. Let me make sure we have Mr. Braden. Are you on? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Um, um, Mr. Um, Sherry Connor. Good morning, President. Good. Mr. Hunt. Oh, my Mr. Haller. Let me start with Mr. Haller. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm on. Mr. Maysod. Present. Wonderful. Mr. Hunt, I'm going to turn it over to you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. For the record, this is James Hunt with the Development Review Division for the Prince George's County Planning Department. I'd like to take a quick moment to introduce to you a new senior planner with the subdivision and zoning section, Mr. Sam Braden of Ford. Um, as a point of background, Mr. Braden obtained his master's degree in public administration from Tennessee State University and his bachelor's degree in biology from Western Kentucky University. Most recently, Mr. Braden was a community and involvement planner with the Hampton Roads Transportation Planning Organization. In addition, Mr. Braden has worked as a planner with Reed Planning, a private development firm in Virginia. I'll, um, everyone, please join me in welcoming Mr. Braden, our newest member of the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Braden, are you on the line or, or the phone? Or are you? Um, I'm um, I'm in the office. Okay, so we can't see you necessarily. I don't think. But c can you see us? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is our this is us saying welcome to you. Welcome to the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning <laughs> Commission, specifically the Planning Department. Thank you. You may proceed. Yes. Hello. There you are. There you are. Okay. Yes, here I am. <laughs> Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. I'm Sam Braden IV, Senior Planner with the Subdivision and Zoning Section. Item number seven on the agenda is a request for a waiver of the rules of procedure. And item number eight is a reconsideration request for preliminary plan of Subdivision 4-05027 Willow Ridge Estates. The Planning Board approved the preliminary plan on March 9th, 2006, and the resolution was adopted on March 30th, 2006. By letter dated June 29th, 2020, Mr. Haller, representing the applicant, requested the waiver of the rules of procedure first, and if granted, a reconsideration of condition 14 of the resolution on the basis of error caused by mistake, inadvertence, or other good cause. This condition is related to vehicular trips and transportation improvements required for the subdivision as stated in staff's July 17, 2020 memorandum and the applicant's request. If the request for a waiver of the rules of procedure and the reconsideration request for the preliminary plan are granted, staff will provide further analysis on the merits of the request at a later planning board hearing. This concludes staff's presentation. Why, thank you, Mr. Braden. Um, nice job. Let's see if there, let's see if there are any questions for you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. No questions. Welcome, Mr. Brayden. Um, Commissioner Washington. No questions. Welcome uh, all as well, Mr. Brayden. Commissioner <laughs> Commissioner Geraldo. Welcome, Mr. Brayden. I have no questions of you, however, but I may later. Okay. There you go. <laughs> um, okay, Mr. Haller, you're on. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. First of all, I would like to congratulate you on getting to the August recess. It has been a long spring and summer so far. And um, I also want to thank the Board for uh, pushing forward during uh, this crazy time with the virtual hearings. It has really been um, uh, welcomed by the, uh, the members of the development community. We want to, we want to thank you for, uh, for staying the course and continuing to meet throughout this time. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. The, the application that's in front of you for Willow Ridge Estates, um, Mr. Brayden noted is a request for a waiver of the rules and a reconsideration request relating to a subdivision that was approved in 2006. The board may recall that a year ago, almost to the day, 
you approved a reconsideration of another subdivision known as the Belfonte subdivision, which was actually approved in 2004. Um, the issue that was raised in that case was that the uh, transportation assumptions that were made and the uh, trips assumed uh, to be impacting the intersection of Woodyard Road and Old Alexandria Ferry Road were found to be in error. Uh, in fact, when the uh, resolution for Willow Ridge Estates was adopted, the premise upon which they found that road improvements were needed was the traffic data that was contained in the Belfonte subdivision. And the board has since found that those uh, that information was uh, inadvertently found to be incorrect. And the board previously approved a reconsideration in that case and approved the waiver of the rules. The basis for the request for the waiver of the rules is that the information uh, upon which we have subsequently been able to conclude that the error was made was not uh, we were not aware of within 14 days after the initial approval of the planning board decision. So, uh, you know, premised upon the uh, the information that was contained in my letter and premised upon the fact that the decision in the Willow Ridge case was based upon the decision in the Belfonte case, which the board has subsequently found to have been incorrect, uh, we would request that the board waive its rules and uh, vote to reconsider this case. Obviously, when we come back in September, we will present additional information with regard to the facts and circumstances supporting the request. Okay. So let's see if the board has any questions of you. Madam Vice Chair? No question. Commissioner Washington? No question. Um, Commissioner Giraldo? Just one question. So, Mr. Haller, so I understand better. What you're doing is bootstrapping based upon what happened before with the other sub with the other uh, subdivision. Is that to what you're some extent, actually the case, in this case, the request for reconsideration is even stronger because uh, this case was approved two years later. And uh, one of the issues that was raised in the uh, Belfonte case was the construction of the new Pearl Harbor gate at Andrews Air Force Base, which was barely under construction in 2004 um, when the Belfonte subdivision was approved, but was under full construction in 2006 when this project was approved. So it clearly should have been taken into account when we were looking at the traffic patterns at the time. Okay, thank you. Okay, that was it for the questions. Okay, so is there a motion to waive the rules. To waive the rules only allows us to entertain the request, and which, if we grant the request, we'll thank, you. thank you. Commissioner Washington. Thank you. Second. Okay, Mary we have Ellie. a motion from Commissioner Washington, Washington, seconded by Commissioner. I mean, seconded by Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Bailey. Um, Vice Chair Bailey. Aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Vote aye. Okay. So we can proceed right into item eight then, because um, the eyes have it um, four zero. But um, now, Mr. Braden, do you have anything else to add on item eight, or do you, or should we go to Mr. Haller? I don't want to cut you off. Yes, ma'am. I, I would like to add a few things. Okay, go ahead. Yes. I, I'd like to incorporate the relevant portions of item seven into the record for item eight. Um, that the applicant's request for reconsideration indicates errors were made in computing the projected traffic patterns at the time the preliminary plan was approved and the required transportation improvements in condition 14 are not necessary. If the request for reconsideration of the preliminary plan is granted, staff will provide further analysis on the merits of the request at a later planning board hearing. This concludes the staff's presentation. Okay, um, thank you again, Mr. Braden. I'm going to turn to Mr. Haller. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just uh, one one uh, additional note. So when the um, Willow Ridge case was originally considered by the planning board, because of the number of lots that were proposed, there was no traffic study actually required. Uh, the, the subdivision only generates 21 a.m. and 26 p.m. peak hour trips. Uh, and, but, and because of that small number, staff conducted its own analysis and it relied upon and used the traffic information that was used in the Belfonte case to reach the conclusion that a, trip, a, a road improvement was required. As noted before, that was uh, determined in the Belfonte reconsideration last year to be an error. And so there are other uh, factors as well 
that we cited in our letter with regard to other road construction projects and other construction projects in the area that impacted the trip generation and the traffic patterns at the time that were not taken into account. Uh, but as Mr. Braden said, we'll get into those details when we get back to the planning board in September. But I have nothing further to add than that. Thank you, um, Mr. Haller. Um, if, if any board member has any additional questions on this, since you may not have had questions on the first part, let me know. I just need to see you. Can you put them all up? Okay, so it looks like no board members have a question. Is, is uh, Mr. Masog, is there anything to add? Nothing to add, Madam Chair. Okay, so um, we'll entertain the, the a vote on the request, and depending on how that goes, um, we'll have a Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Washington, um, and I move that based on the applicant's testimony, uh, also as well as the applicant's letter of uh, justification dated June 29th, the evidence of new traffic data uncovered, and importantly, staff's concurrence. Uh, I move that we grant the request for reconsideration of preliminary plan 4-05027, uh, specifically for condition number 14, on the basis of error, inadvertence, or other good cause, and in furtherance of substantial public interest. Second, Commissioner Geraldo. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Madam, um, Madam Vice Chair? Good aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. Okay, the ayes have it for zero. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Braden. Well done. Um, congratulations. Thank okay, you, Madam Chair. Enjoy August. Yeah, but th thank you, Mr. Haller. But we have the next one, too, Mr. Braden. You're on again. So we have item nine, which is also a waiver of the rules for preliminary plan of subdivision for Forest Hills. And item 10 is the request for reconsideration. Um, so I think we have the same people. Mr. Um, Mr. Braden, you're still on, right? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Con Con Hold on, I'm just doing a check. Ms. Connor? Ms. Connor? Okay, Mr. Maysog? Mr. Maysog? Okay, maybe you're going to... Okay, Brian Barnett Woods? And, I need, and Helen Hassan. Is Helen Hassan on? This is a Parks and Rec item. Present. Okay. I'm present, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, now, Mr. Braden, you're on. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. I am Sam Braden IV, Senior Planner with the Subdivision and Zoning Section. Item number nine on the agenda is a request for a waiver of the rules of procedure. And item number 10 is a reconsideration request for a preliminary plan of subdivision 4-03071 Forest Hills. The planning board approved the preliminary plan on January 15, 2004, and the resolution was adopted on February 12, 2004. Staff notes the representative for this request was incorrectly stated in the staff memorandum. The representative in this case is Mr. Gregory Ballion by letter dated January, excuse me, July 1st, uh, 2020, Mr. Ballion representing the applicant requested the waiver of the rules of procedure first. And if granted a reconsideration of conditions 10 and 11 and finding seven of the resolution on the basis of inadvertence or good cause or other good cause. These conditions are related to trail location and construction along the western boundary of the property. If the request for reconsideration of the rules of procedure is granted, the applicant requests a reconsideration, which is item 10 on the agenda. The applicant's request indicates that the trail construction in this area has not yet occurred. A trail on this property would not provide connection to an existing trail system and a fee in lieu of trail construction is proposed. The applicant has been working with the Parks Department on the anticipated implementation of trails system in the area, and if the reconsideration request for the preliminary plan is granted, staff will provide further analysis on the merits of the request at a later planning board hearing. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you, Mr. Um, Braden. Are there any questions, Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Thank Commissioner you. Washington? No questions. Com Commissioner Geraldo? 
No questions. Okay. Um, so with that, um, is there, I don't think there's anyone else here. Oh, Ms. Hassan. Ms. Hassan. Yes, Madam Chair, we support of this reconsideration. We will evaluate it, uh, this case. It's, uh, its information is correct. There is no trail, uh, master plan trail on the south or north of this project area. And uh, we will reevaluate and provide recommendations to you at the time of the hearing for this uh, case, um, how to deal it with this situation. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hassan. Okay. So, um, um, is there a motion? Move approval, Madam Chair. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion from Commissioner Washington, seconded by um, Madam Vice Chair. Um, Madam Vice Chair? All right. Commissioner Washington? All right. Commissioner Geraldo? All right. Okay, um, so the motion for to waive um, carries 4-0. Um, item 10, when we'll incorporate that, uh, all the pertinent um, testimony and presentations into item 10, which is the actual request for reconsideration. Oh, and you know what? And now I think only I can make the motion because I think I'm the only board member who was present at that time when this case was heard. So um, I, I am, if there, is there anything else that needs to be added at this time? Mr. Braden or anyone? Then I'm going to make the motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, nothing else needs to be added. So then um, I'm going to make the motion to um, to reconsider this case. Um, I think, as as explained, the the it's it was impossible really to go forward with the Western Branch Trail alignment um, connecting these these other um, segments of the trail at this juncture. So um, there there I find there is good cause to reconsider this um, and and we'll set the hearing in for a later date. So that's my motion. Uh, this will, I'll second it and ask that we uh, also ensure that it's uh, just for conditions 10 and 11. Yes. Sir. Preliminary plan. Yeah. Th thank you. It's a limited reconsideration. Yes, conditions 10 and 11. Thank you so much. And I'm sure the seconder mm -hmm. accepts that too. Okay. Yes. You are the seconder. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Madam, Madam Vice Chair. Good eye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Vote aye. Okay, the ayes have it for zero. Um, thank you. And again, very good, Mr. Braden. Okay, so now we're going to take a moment, or more than a moment. We're going to, we have a couple of remaining cases. We're going to go to item 12, which is this um, SDP 1802 for Brandywine Village Commercial, specific design plan. We have a lot of people on this case, and I'm going to make sure, I'm going to do um, a check to make sure we have everyone. So, Mr. Bossi. Morning, Madam Chair. I'm present. Wonderful. Good morning. Um, Jill Kosak. Present. Mr. Horn. Present. Uh, Ms. Finch. Kim Finch. Um, okay, Kim Finch, I see you have signed on. Present. Okay, thank you. Um, Glenn Burton. Present. Ben Ryan. Present. Ivy Thompson. Ivy Thompson. Okay, we'll come back to Ivy. Um, uh, Matthew Tedesco. Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm present. Wonderful. Meredith Byer. Present. Michael Lenhart. Present. Joseph Caputo. Uh, present, Madam Chair. Wonderful. Sarah Coombs. Okay, I'm going to come back to a couple people. Um, Jamila Valamani. Okay, I guess so. Um, Tashara Burgess. Present. Wonderful. Um, Angela Simmons. 
Present. Um, Valerie Davis. Jennifer Jackson. Present. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go back to Ivy Thompson. Ivy Thompson. Okay, Sarah Coombs. Madam Chair, this is James Hunt. I'm going to reach out to Bobby Ray to fill in for Ivy in the event. She's having tech issues. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, I've called Sarah Coombs from Dewberry, but um, we have Meredith Byer, so I guess, Ms. Byer, you're okay there, right? Yeah, I'm here. That's okay. fine. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. You ready for takeoff, Mr. Bossy? All right. Well, good morning, <laughs> Madam Chairwoman and members of the Planning Board. For the record, I'm Adam Bossy with the Urban Present. Design Center. Present. I believe we just had Sarah Coombs chiming in as present. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Coombs. Okay. Okay, Mr. Bossy, you may continue. Yep, so item 12 is the specific de design plan, SDP 1802 for Brandywine Village Commercial. Uh, this SDP proposes the development of a 2,200 square foot eating and drinking establishment with drive-through service uh, on parcel two and proposes the development of a 16,000 square foot commercial retail building also with a single drive-through. Uh, infrastructure associated with these parcels as well as the development of an access road to serve the commercial portion of the Brandywine Village area is proposed uh, as part of this application. Uh, members of the board uh, and those participating, as you are aware, the hearing on this SDP was continued several times while we awaited the district council's issuance of a final order on the amendment to the related comprehensive design plan, CDP 1201-01. Uh, the planning board had approved the CDP amendment uh, back in late 2019. And I'm pleased to report that the council did meet this past Monday, July 27th, and did vote to issue the final order on the CDP amendment. Uh, the council's decision is included in your, in your additional backup file for today's hearing. Uh, in addition to these materials, the applicant and citizens have submitted additional documents into your backup uh, before yesterday's 10 a.m. deadline as well. These items include the applicant's exhibits one through four, and several uh, county health and food system reports and emails submitted by citizens. Again, those would be in your, your additional backup. Uh, with that, we will get right into the presentation. Can we have slide two, please. Uh, the subject property is in planning area 85A, Council District 9. This is the Brandywine area in Southern Prince George's County, slide three. Subject property is in the southwest quadrant of the intersection of US 301, uh, it's Robert Crane Highway, and Chad's Ford Drive. Slide four, please. The Brandywine Village Commercial Development is in the Local Activity Center Zone, that's the LAC Zone, uh, which is a comprehensive design zone. Back in January of 2009, the District Council approved two basic plans, which did rezone the entire Brandywine Village site and the surrounding area. Again, subject site outlined in yellow, as well as the abutting uh, residential development to the west was zoned LAC at that time. Slide five, please. Here, the aerial image shows the subject site bordered by US 301 to the east and existing residential development to the west. Chad's Ford Drive borders the southern end of the site uh, with undeveloped, with it, uh, and an undeveloped out parcel is located just north of, of the site. Uh, the subject site is currently developed with a stormwater management pond and associated driveway. And for a little additional context, the subject site uh, was subject to several prior approvals, uh, which I will uh, discuss in a little bit greater detail on slide seven. We move to slide six, please. Uh, as shown here on this topographic image, the site uh, does slope gradually from east to west toward a stream valley located near the western property line. Slide seven, please. 
Uh, US 301, shown here in orange, abuts the east side of the site is classified as a freeway. Two other master plan roadways are also located nearby. Uh, A55, which is shown in red, is a planned uh, master plan roadway, uh, master plan arterial roadway, excuse me. And General Lafayette Boulevard, which is shown in blue, is a major collector roadway, a portion of which has been constructed through the abutting townhouse development. Uh, with this image, as I mentioned, I would like to provide a little additional context regarding the site and prior zoning approvals. Uh, as shown here, the subject site, uh, the subject area of this SDP, excuse me, is highlighted in yellow. And this is a portion of the larger 44.3 acre Brandywine Village property that is outlined in blue. The blue outline coincides with the limits of CDP 1201, which was approved by the board in May of 2013. Um, and this provided a development concept for the entire 44.3 acre Brandywine Village site. This included the commercial portion, a portion part of which we'll be discussing today, uh, as well as the townhouse portion uh, to the west of it. Preliminary plan of subdivision 4-12007 was approved in May of 2013 as well. And this did provide for 191 lots and 24 parcels to support uh, both the residential and commercial development in Brandywine Village. Uh, potential traffic impacts to the development were evaluated as well as a single temporary right-in, right-out access point to US 301 uh, was allowed through the preliminary plan of subdivision. The traffic impact, impact analysis established a trip cap for traffic volume generated by the residential and com commercial portions of the proposed development. Uh, the development of 188 townhouse units, General Lafayette Boulevard, and associated infrastructure was approved by the board in March 2014 under specific design plan 1303. Uh, in February of 2017, the board did approve specific design plan 1604 for the development of limited infrastructure, including the existing stormwater pond on the commercial portion of the property. Uh, and CDP 1201, which governs the subject site, and CSP 81800-3 for calm retreat, that's the abutting site to the north, uh, both provide for future uh, roadway connections, uh, excuse me, north-south roadway connections to the access road that is proposed as part of this SDP, which you'll see in future slides. Uh, both this access road as well as General Lafayette Boulevard, again shown here in blue, uh, at some point in the future will connect to A55 on the commerce, on the Com Retreat site. Uh, and again, staff just wanted to provide this, this overview just for a little bit of context here. Uh, can we move on to slide eight, please? So here, looking at the site from north to south, that's the top of the slide working down. Uh, parcel three shows a gray rectangle, which represents the proposed 16,000 square foot commercial retail building, uh, which has parking provided on its eastern, southern, and western sides. A single drive-through service window is provided on the north side of this building. Uh, and east of the, the parking lot associated with this building is the site access road, as well as the right-in, right-out connection to US 301. Uh, this connection to US 301 will require permitting through the State Highway Administration, who indicated the plans as, as presented in the SDP are acceptable to them. Moving south, we see the existing stormwater management pond with the access road to the east of it. This is followed by parcel two on the east side of the access road on which the 2200 square foot eating and drinking establishment is proposed. Uh, the proposal is specifically for a, a Taco Bell eating and drinking establishment. Drive through service is provided on the west side of this building. Parking is provided to the east and north of it. Uh, and there are two connections to the access road at the northwest and southwest corners of parcel two respectively. Uh, the loading space and southern driveway for this parcel are to be provided on actually on parcel one slightly south. Uh, please note that a separate SDP, which we will be, uh, which is the next item on your agenda, SDP 1803, um, does propose full development of parcel one, whereas uh, this application proposes the development of, of some limited infrastructure on parcel one, as well as creation of the parcel. 
Uh, continuing south, uh, we do see that the access road widens at its connection to Chadsford Drive to provide one entry lane and two exit lanes. Um, on each of the sites here that we see, adequate parking, loading, and lighting has been provided. Additionally, site circulation and traffic information reviewed with the SDP indicate that trip generation will be under the established trip cap limits from the preliminary plan. And staff's analysis shows that ad adequate circulation will be provided throughout the development area. Slide nine, please. Landscaping, including shrubs and shade trees, is provided on parcel two and three in conformance with the applicable requirements of the landscape manual. Additional tree plantings are provided along the access drive where they're feasible. Uh, the applicant has requested to modify condition 1F of the staff report as provided in applicant's exhibit one in your additional backup. And this is to clarify that a portion of the section 4.2 landscape trip uh, strip plantings will be located partially within the public utility easements on site. Uh, staff does agree with this proposed modification to condition 1F. Additionally, applicants exhibit one proposes to revise condition 1J of the staff report. And this is regarding the provision of a left turn lane into parcel one. Um, staff also does agree with the applicants modifications to condition 1J. Slide 10, please. A type two tree conservation plan was filed with this application and was found to be in conformance with the applicable requirements of the ordinance. Um, this is subject to a series of technical revisions as recommended on page 20 of the staff report. Slide 11, please. Uh, the underlying CDP for the site included the existing residential development located west of the subject site and the commercial area that includes the subject development. I think this image uh, kind of shows that uh, captured pretty well here. With the subject site, parcel three, um, the commercial retail building is shown north of the stormwater pond again. And in this area, there is a trail connection that is shown spanning the central wooded area between the commercial and residential areas from parcel three. Um, this is to the west to connect with an existing walking trail in the residential development. Uh, this trail connection is actually a requirement of the underlying CDP. The eating and drinking establishment shown south of the, is shown south of the stormwater pond. Uh, the third building that is shown in the southernmost portion of the site on parcel one is uh, there for illustrative purposes. Again, this is the 7-Eleven and gas station that are subject of SDP 1803, the next item on your agenda. Uh, in addition to what's shown here, the applicants exhibit three and four uh, that was submitted to in your additional backup uh, provides for a site tight fence along the western edge of the commercial development, as, as we see it here in the illustrative image, um, as well as um, the inclusion of chain link fencing around a portion of the stormwater pond. Uh, exhibit four, which is directly related to exhibit three, proffers to add conditions six and seven to the staff report, which would require the provision of this fencing and inclusion of a gate in the fence uh, where the trail opens into the parking area at the southwest corner of the commercial building on parcel three. Uh, well, staff does support the inclusion of the additional fencing in the gate at the trailhead as shown on applicants exhibit three. Um, you know, we, we do support the intent of that, but we did have some concerns with the uh, language and timing of the conditions as proffered by the applicant in exhibit four. Uh, with that, we did have some continued discussions with the applicant and Mr. Horn late yesterday um, and have found agreement on two alternative conditions. These uh, conditions are not yet in your, are, were not provided into your record in writing, again, as they were um, uh, worked out late yesterday, but I'd be pleased to read them into the record with the board's permission, and I can either That's do that now or at the end of the presentation as, as you determine appropriate. When you're ready, when it works for you. Okay. Well, while we're on topic, I will I'll get them out there now, and if I thank need you. to repeat them at the end, we'll be happy to do that again. Okay, thank you. Um, so the revised language that, that staff and the applicant did find agreeable yesterday uh, was essentially to not include the conditions as written by the applicant, but instead to provide for conditions 1Q and 1R. Uh, which would read prior to certificate approval of the specific design plan the applicant shall q revise the sdp per applicants exhibit three to 
to show and provide details for a site type fence along the western edge of the development and a chain link fence adjacent to the stormwater pond subject to DPI approval. And the second one would be uh, 1R. Again, this would be a prior to certificate approval of the specific design plan. The applicant shall at the trailhead on parcel three provide a light, a gate in the fence, which is to remain unlocked and wayfinding signage along with appropriate details for these features. I do believe that we could utilize the language provided by the applicant in Exhibit 4 to form findings to, uh, to support the inclusion of these two conditions. Uh, we move to slide 12, please. Uh, here we see some details of the proposed uh, boardwalk and uh, that would be part of the trail connection between the residential and commercial areas. Uh, this will be an elevated boardwalk that would uh, span the stream and some of the wetland area and staff believes that this design is appropriate for that location. Slide 13, please. Uh, the 2200 square foot uh, eating and drinking establishment again is proposed as a Taco Bell restaurant with drive through service. The architectural elevations here show a modern design style with the main entrance and dining area accented with a vertical tower element and horizontal slatting in a wood tone. Slide 14, please. Signage proposed for the Taco Bell is typical for the, for the uh, brand and for the use and was found to be in conformance with the requirements of the zoning ordinance. Slide 15, please. The 16,000 square foot commercial retail building is rectangular in, in shape, single story, and surfaced in two tones of brown and white masonry. And a drive through window is provided along the northern facade of the building. Ample fenestration is provided through large windows on the eastern facade facing US 301. Uh, the general design and locations for signage um, that have been provided was found to be acceptable. And slide 16, please. Uh, in addition to the tenant specific signage, two monument signs are proposed. Uh, one on the site's frontage with US 301 and a second on the corner of the access road in Chadsford Drive. Staff found these signs were uh, acceptable for this development. Slide 17, please. And finally, here we have uh, an illustrative image that visualizes the completed and operational uh, shopping center building, the 16,000 square foot retail building. Uh, in conclusion, staff recommends that the project proposed in this SDP conforms with the applicable requirements of the zoning ordinance and prior approvals. In respect to the applicant's memorandums requesting changes to the state back report, staff finds the proposed revisions to conditions, uh, I believe it was 1F and 1J, as noted on Exhibit 1, were acceptable. And again, uh, applicants exhibit four conditions, six and seven staff does not agree with, but has proposed the alternative conditions, which were read into the record and the applicant does agree with. With that, staff recommends that the planning board approve SDP 1802 and TCP 2-002-2014-05 for Brandywine Village commercial development. Again, with the conditions included uh, in the technical staff report and modifications to conditions 1F and 1J as noted in applicants exhibit one. And finally, the addition of uh, conditions 1, uh, 1Q and 1R as previously read into the record. This concludes staff's presentation. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Bossi. Let's see if there are any questions of you at this time. Okay, Madam Vice Chair. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Gerardo? I have one question, okay. Madam Chair. With regards to the boardwalk, do we know what that's going to be, what material that be, will be used? Uh, if we could go back to that slide, it may be noted on there. I believe the materials were noted. Um, in the application. Uh, Mr. Horn or Mr. Caputo may have a better idea off the okay. top of their head. Wait, they could answer it then. Okay. No further questions. Sure. Okay, thank you. If there are no, since there are no other questions of Mr. Bossi, Mr. Horn, you're on. 
<clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Board. For the record, Arthur Horn, the loss of Shipley Horn in Largo, Maryland. Very pleased to uh, be here and uh, present this uh, case uh, before you. Um, uh, I'm here with uh, Mr. Joe Caputo, who is the uh, owner of the property, is uh, Mr. Bossi, who, as we all know, has done a fantastic job in explaining. Um, he, this is uh, 1802 and 1803, the case that's coming after us, uh, is all part of the one uh, CDP that was approved, and Mr. Caputo uh, is uh, the owner of both. Uh, we have, as you mentioned in your introduction, this, uh, this Meredith Byer and Ms. Sarah Combs of Dewberry, the civil engineers, and we have Mr. Uh, Mike Linhart from the transportation, from Linhart Traffic uh, Associates. And, uh, and I uh, co-counsel on this, uh, Mr. Matthew Tedesco, who, again, as we mentioned, represents the uh, other, uh, the 7-Eleven, which is the uh, property, the, the part of the uh, application for the CDP and that's coming up in the case next. And the, the information with reference to transportation and all, it really applies to both. So it's important that, you know, he, he'd be a part of this as well. I think, uh, Madam Chair, I, I couldn't have said it better myself when this, in front of the CDP and the district council when, uh, parking planning staff said this is a splendid example of a comprehensive design zone and exactly what the county had in mind when they uh, designed it. A combination of both residential and commercial uh, in, in the development. And uh, the, as you noted in the plans that were seen previously, uh, the residential portion has been developed uh, as was anticipated and now comes the commercial uh, part of the development. And the, the commercial part is rightfully so, right on 301, you know, major uh, roadway. And uh, it utilizes uh, as much as it can uh, this 16,000 square feet of uh, retail and then also the 2,200 square feet for the Taco Bell and then the, later on the 7-Eleven. I think that... Um, as Mr. Bossi says, uh, you know, we, we agree with uh, the staff's recommendations with the minor modifications to two conditions. Uh, the, Mr. Caputo has met with the uh, community on a number of occasions. I think it's uh, important to note that uh, we do recognize that there was some significant concerns about the commercial development at this location. And so Mr. Caputo has went out and, and has met with them on a, on a number of cases. When I say met, you know, this COVID time is actually uh, through video uh, and not necessarily in person, but has been able to talk with several of the residents and stuff. And, and, and that was the reason why the applicant is proposing uh, applicants exhibit three and four. And um, what... Mr. Caputo was able to ascertain in his conversations, other than the fact that there was some concerns about the, the, the uses that were there, I'll get back to that in a second, was the concern that even though the, the, the idea of a LAC zone and the comprehensive design zone was connectivity and that their trail does connect to, uh, the concern was are we inviting people from the commercial area to now come up into the residential area? And then also the concern was the visibility from the residential area to the commercial area. So what Mr. Caputo said, well, what he thinks we could do to try to address the concerns that were stated uh, by the community is that we would put a site type fence up along the areas where um, uh, Mr. Bossi pointed out, uh, that's in, the, in our applicants exhibit number three, mm -hmm. uh, to try to help uh, alleviate some of that issue. And then also replace a gate at the point of the trail so that you can get in and out and continue to use the trail, but a gate would perhaps be a deterrent for anybody coming into the area. Now, the staff has said uh, that it can't be secured and, and, and uh, as perhaps some of the citizens wish to have it, 
because you need to be able to have access, but it can uh, serve as a deterrent coupled with the suggestion of staff that that area be uh, has some additional lighting. And the applicant in this particular case, we agree with that. Uh, and again, our efforts with reference to that gate and the light and the security of that coupled with the uh, attempt to add site type fencing was uh, in response to some of the concerns that Mr. Caputo had heard uh, when, as he spoke with the community. Lastly, one of the things that you see in the backup, uh, the community talks about the, the overabundance of the fast food and, and health and the type of um, uh, uses that is being proposed. And uh, again, the, the property owners are, are well aware of um, you know that concern, and and obviously, you know, especially in this time, you know, it, it, who opens restaurants and things along those lines, it, it, it's all changing. It's an ever changing um, uh, market that's going on now. But um, one of the things that it has to be pointed out is the Taco Bell is a permitted use, and it is a a, a use that. Uh, would go in that area for 2,200 square feet. They have a prototype of that size. Uh, and more importantly, even though it's not necessarily relevant to it, we went and looked at some, in some background on the Taco Bell, and we put that in as Applicants Exhibit 2, where there was a Reader's Digest article in May of 2020, just recently, that talked about healthy fast foods, and Taco Bell is number one. And uh, I cannot speak from personal experience of the Taco Bell. I can say that in reading it, the type of uh, cuisine that they offer is designated as being healthy. Whether that's more healthy than other fast foods or healthy, other, I can't opine on that, nor would I try to. But my, the point is that of the uses that are being proposed, Again, it's a permitted use, so you not want to get into the menu of a restaurant, but be that as it may, we heard what they were saying and were pleased to be able to place in a use that uh, is seemingly, um, the studies have indicated, would be a healthy uh, eating. So uh, having said that, um, you know, we agree with uh, the staff's uh, recommendations and approvals. And with the uh, applicants exhibit one, and then applicants exhibit two and three, and f instead of four, uh, as mentioned by Mr. Bossy, we would like to have that language be used in part of the findings, and 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 we will adopt staff's language of one um, Q and one R, which again is really the same thing as uh, as we put in exhibit six, but it went further and said. It defined where the fencing would be, uh, and it would it defined where the gate would be, and talked about uh, providing a light for safety and security. And again, Mr. Caputo could go in more detail, but as far as the, um, you know, some of the other concerns, there's going to be plenty of security cameras and stuff in and around the area. Uh, the, the, he is there. The, the management companies that are be utilizing the site are well aware of what's going on, and uh, this will be a tremendous asset to Prince George's County and the community, and I, I just, uh, I, you know, I recommend that the planning board uh, uh, support this uh, application. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Horn. Let, let me see if the board has any questions of you at this time. Uh, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, uh, Mr. Horn mentioned, again, additional lighting. Uh, and I'm, I think I missed the additional lighting on display. Was there, did we see something that indicate where the, and where that additional lighting will occur? Um, I'm seeing Mr. The Boss, he may be able to put it up on the screen for us where, uh, or it's at the uh, gate, the, the lighting of, will be all in the front and the back of the building, the retail building. And the request is to have the light uh, at the gate at the beginning of the trail and that recommendation i think was made from uh the trails department of park and planning and said that even though uh the community is, is asking for 
this additional uh, security screening that uh, when you have additional screening, that doesn't necessarily equate to additional safety. And right. so therefore, uh, you know, that they recommended that we put an additional light there also uh, for uh, safety purposes. Mr. Bossy, can you, um, I'm looking at the slides now and um, I'm trying to figure out which slide might best depict it for um, Madam Vice Chair. Oh, well, ma'am, uh, this is Adam Bossi again from the Urban Design section. Uh, looking at this illustrative image, if we look at that top building that's that's proposed, okay. yep, that uh, okay. Kenneth is pointing at, the additional lighting that, that staff has suggested would be to the southwest of that, essentially where the trailhead connects with the parking okay. lot. Oh, so right where the cursor is, uh, yep, a little bit more to the right, right in that area right there. Okay. All right. So that southwest corner of the commercial building, and that coincides with the uh, the trailhead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And and ma'am, if if I may answer uh, Commissioner Geraldo's question too, um, the uh, boardwalk uh, detail has shown that the material specified is pressure treated yellow pine, and this is uh, the same detail that's used by the Parks Department. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, so that was Madam Vice Chair. Commissioner Washington, any questions? No additional questions, Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Geraldo, any additional questions? No, just a comment with regards to the, the use of the uh, pressure-treated pine. I just find it after time that wears out and whether or not uh, we should start considering them using uh, the recycled recycled plastic, such as Trek or something like that, which has a much longer life. That's all. Um, Mr. Horn, do you, are you or any of your um, team care to address that? Uh, I was I defer to Mr. Caputo if he's okay. If he's on, yeah, I'm, I'm here, Madam Chair. Members okay. of the uh, Planning Board, um, uh, we. Um, the trail will be maintained by uh, by the develop development group. So, um, you know, if there are any sort of, I know we're going to have a bunch of uh, maintenance on the fence and things of in that perpetuity? nature. So, in perpetuity. Excuse me. In perpetuity. In per yeah. The, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's going to remain. Okay. I just want to make sure that that's what you're saying. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, we could take a look at the at the tracks material. You know, in my experience, the, the there'll be a small section of the of the trail which will be boardwalk uh, where it's at grade there'll be some asphalt so it'll be an combination um it, it won't be a very long span and, and it won't be very um it won't be elevated to a great extent it really just goes over the um uh, the wetland so um you know i think that the longevity of, of the wood is is adequate when we can certainly look at alternate materials and um you know since we're going to be maintaining it we, we want it to look good we want it to be presentable and and, and um, you know we, we can we can look into that okay well since since you uh, answered madam chair that it'll be in perpetuity I feel a little I, it's just that that I've seen in this computer and other places where they they use the pressured wood and after a couple of two three years it begins to deteriorate splints it uh, fractures off whereas the uh, whereas the recyclable the trek or similar uh, products made from recycled bamboo have a much longer lifespan. That's all. Okay, we'll definitely and take a look at that. Easier, and easier to maintain. <laughs> yes, we, we will definitely look at that. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so no other questions at this time? Okay, um, Mr. Horn, do you need to follow up with anyone at this time? Okay, so uh, no, not unless Mr. Tedesco wanted to say anything, okay. but if okay. not, I was going to call on him next anyway. He's he's next. Uh, well, um, Mr. Tedesco. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. For the record, Matthew Tedesco, the law firm of McNamee, Hosey, and Greenbelt, on behalf of 7-Eleven Inc., which is the applicant of the for SDP 1803, which is agenda item number 11. Um, I would align myself um, with. Mr. Horn's comments, as well as Mr. Bossy's comments, um, and just, although I'll say when the next matter, when agenda item 11 is called, we just want to clarify that um, we are incorporating, adopting items from 
agenda item 12 into the agenda item 11 for expediency purposes and for the records. Other than that, um, again, I would align myself with Mr. Horn. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tedesco. So, um, Mr. Horn, I, of your speakers here, we have um, uh, Ms. Byer and Mr. Lenhart and Mr. Caputo has already spoken. Do you need to present Mr. Byer or Mr. Lenhart at this time? No, ma'am. They're there just to answer any questions if uh, need be. Okay, thank you. I am now going to proceed in this order. Ms. Uh, Balamani? Yes, I'm here. Okay, um, so it's your turn to speak. Okay. And you've waited a long time for this. I did. <laughs> Is she, do you, is she, okay. Hold on, I'm here. I'm going to ask the others to turn their mics off for them so, to make sure we don't have any background noises, okay? Okay. Well, we've done it, I guess. Well, we didn't do it. So, are you ready, Ms. Balamani? Yes, I'm ready. I just pulled up my email. Oh, okay. Today, Madam Chair, members of Prince George's County Planning Board, my name is Jamila Balamani. I am a homeowner in the Chatsworth community. I'm testifying on the behalf of the Brandywine Healthy Neighborhood Alliance. We are more than 580 area residents deeply concerned by the increasing number of brandy wine area establishments that can be characterized as food slots. These establishments serve food dense in calories, high in sodium, and high in sugar, which contributes to an epidemic of obesity and other adverse health effects. Food swap establishments include fast food, carry out, and other restaurants along with convenience stores. Brandy Wine Commercial Village, as approved, will increase the threat to the nutritional health of our families by adding three more food swap establishments, not to mention the other future development to Brandy Wine Road that will bring more fast food restaurants such as Burger King. We will not be asking you to deny the specific design plan approval, but first see if you can get the applicant to seek establishments that will begin to drain the Brandywine area food swamp. In your 2015 report, Healthy Foods for Prince Georgians, the planning board noted, Prince George's County has higher than average rates in a diet-related chronic disease in Maryland and more than two-thirds of the adult population in the county is overweight or obese. The obesity rate is on the rise, and in the last 20 years, it increased from 19% to 35%. The 2020 Heart Disease Fact Sheet published by the Prince George's County Health Department, three out of every four Prince George's County adults are obese or overweight. One out of every 10 Prince George's County adults are estimated to have diabetes. In 2018, one in four deaths in the county were due to heart disease. Two out of three women and one out of two men suddenly died from coronary heart disease. The 2020 Robert Williams Johnson Health Ranking shows that Prince George's County was rated the 16th worst out of Maryland's 23 counties and Baltimore City. In my document submitted to the planning board, you will find a map from the Johns Hopkins Center for, for a Livable Future. The map shows that compared to the rest of the rural southern Prince George's County, Brandywine has a far greater concentration of fast food and sit-down restaurants. According to the U.S. Census Bureau data, the Brandywine area also has twice as many convenience stores per capita when compared to the country to the countywide average. And convenience stores are another food swamp category. I realize that the 77 convenience store is not before you today. However, the com the combined impact of an unusual large 
number of food swamp restaurants and food swamp convenience stores does pose a unique suit, a uniquely severe threat to the health of French, um, to the health of Brandywine residents. The project before you today would make a bad situation worse. Fortunately, the Brandywine area does benefit from two somewhat healthy supermarkets, Aldi's and Safeway. So while we are not in a food desert, the health of our families is under threat from growing from a growing number of food swamp establishments. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you so very much um, for your presentation. We we appreciate that. And we do realize, um, and, and I, you may have others speak too, and I, I, I do want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to be heard. I do want to make sure that we are not overly redundant. So if anyone wants to echo the sentiments as shared by Ms. Balamani, feel free to do so. You, you can just say you adopt or you concur with her statements. I do want to tell you that, um, as Mr. Horn indicated, um, a use is as a restaurant use is permitted, and we cannot dictate the type of use, the type of restaurant use. Once it's once the council determined that this was a permitted use, then who they get um, is beyond our control. You know, you, you've made suggestions. Um, clearly, they're hearing you to a certain extent because they did the research on Taco Bell. It may not be what you had in mind, but they did say that Taco Bell, and, the, and we're looking at the exhibits, which you may or may not have, at that, but they were uploaded. The, um, the exhibits that talk about the what Taco Bell has to offer and that of the fast food restaurants that they have the healthiest choices. And we all make choices out here. Some of us make the wrong choices all too often. But um, um, I do appreciate all that you've said and all that you have, um, s a that everyone has submitted into the record. Um, um, so uh, let's see if the board has any questions of you, Ms. Balamani. And we thank you also for your patience, you know, for, for signing on and signing on every week um, or every time it was um, subsequently continued. Ms. Um, Madam Vice Chair, do you have any questions of Ms. Balamani? I don't have any questions, but I'd like to, to thank her for her comments. Yeah. I know some of us struggle with the whole notion of eating appropriately and obesity, and so it's an issue of great importance to many of us. Uh, even though, you know, technically there, that isn't anything that we can address right now, but certainly something that is a community that we need to look at uh, in, in, in a variety of ways through many of organizations that we have in the county. But it's certain, thank her, I do thank her very much for her comments. Okay. Um, okay, thank you so much. Um, Matt, Commissioner Washington? No questions, but I too would like to thank Ms. Bowmoney for her testimony. Thank you. Commissioner Geraldo? I don't have any questions, but I do share the same concerns that she has, as does the planning board, uh, because as we know, uh, we, we received a number of presentations by our staff regarding the food deserts and the fast food that's in the county. But as my fellow commissioner said, it's a permitted use, but it would be good for developers in the future to uh, consider other eating options for our residents. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm going to, with that, um, thank you, Ms. Balamani, and we're going to go to Ms. Burgess. Ms. Um, Tashara Burgess? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Um, good day, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, my name is Tashara Burgess, and I am a homeowner in the Chasper, develop, in the Chasper community. Um, before I begin my testimony, I just would like to say that um, I would like to point out that we had to request a meeting with the developer. The developer never initiated a meeting with the, uh, with the community. With that being said, I'm testifying on behalf of the Brandywine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance. The Brandywine Commercial Village Specific Design Plan 1802 would deepen the food swamp by, allow by allowing three more food swamp establishments to be added to our area. Taco Bell, Tropical Smoothie, and a 7-Eleven convenience store, not to mention the other future development at Brandywine Road that will bring more fast food restaurants such as Burger King and the uncertainty of future occupants in Brandywine Village. While the SDP 1802 staff report noted this issue, it did not recommend any solutions. The staff report included a 2019 Prince George Health Department memo, which was also submitted to the planning board. 
The first health impact ass assessment issue noted in this memo was, there are more than five existing carry-out convenience store food facilities and four grocery stores markets within a one within a half mile radius of this location. Research has found that people who live near an abundance of fast food restaurants and convenience stores compared to grocery stores and fresh produce vendors have a significantly higher prevalence of obesity and diabetes. We dis we discussed our concerns with both the health department and also Mrs. and also Mr. Bossy's team. As reflected in their 2019 memo, the health department officials were very concerned about the Brandywine food swamp issue. Development review staff forwarded the health department's concern to the applicant, and we asked the development review staff what response was received from the applicant. In a June 2nd message, development review staff Adam Bossy wrote, the health department's comments on zoning applications are advisory, so no formal response was required by the board nor provided by the applicant. So this was very disheartening that the health department pointed out a big issue, but neither the planning board nor the applicant addressed this issue. The members of the Brandywine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance were deeply troubled by this response. We believe that the planning board has the authority to stem the public health threat posed by a proliferation of food swamp establishments in the Brandywine area and Prince George County. Prince George County Zoning Ordinance Section 27 527 required referral of specific design plan before you to the health department for a health impact assessment. The 2019 health department memo was the result of that assessment. And the first health impact issue listed in the assessment was the abundance of food swamp establishments in the Brandywine area. Section 27-528B requires that the planning board make a make a make a finding that the specific design plan will safeguard public health because brandywine commercial village will add three more food swamp establishments to the brandywine area not to mention that the other future development at brandywine road will bring more fast food restaurants um, the uncertainty of future occupants in brandywine village i do not believe you can make this required finding we are not asking you to deny the approval of SDP 1802. Instead, we ask you continue this hearing and direct the applicant to use the intervening period to make a concerted effort to attract restaurants to the Brandywine Commercial Village that provide healthier foods, healthier foods such as Sweet Green, Life Kitchen, Veggie Grill, Protein Bar, Panera Bread, and we can provide many, many other examples. You'll find numerous upon numerous comments submitted to the planning board from the Brandywine residents regarding their desire for the planning board to use their authority to, to guide economic growth in a direction that makes the Brandywine that makes Brandywine an even better place to live. Lastly, as a veteran, I swore to protect this nation against foreign and domestic enemies. Now I'm asking the council and the planning board to protect to protect the residents of Brandywine and Prince George County. Food swamps is a type of domestic enemy because it harms the people. Prince George County almost doubles the size of Anne Arundel County, according to the 22 census. I did my census. PG County has 908,801 residents, and Anne Arundel has 571 and 592 residents. So we doubled the size of Anne Arundel County. Yet healthy food stores and other chains continue to build around this county. It is time to end social disparity that plagues Prince George County by its lack of healthy food options. I just want to point out real quick, and I'm almost done, Madam Chair, that I am not original. I am not um, from Prince George County. I am originally from Miami, Florida. And the first time when I was got stationed to this county, this is the first thing that I recognize is the food swamp, the social disparity that is in Prince George County. 
It is time for the leaders of this county to send developers a strong message that Prince George County will not be given scraps while healthy establishments are being built in neighboring counties. Just a couple of weeks ago, I had to drive 45 minutes just to go to Bethesda to, to, to find something healthy. The residents of Brandywine and Prince George County deserve better. I'm going to echo that again. We deserve better. Change starts with you all, our county officials, and planning board. And your decision today is very important as it will convey your stance on health and concern for the residents of Brandywine and Prince George County. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Ms. Burgess. And um, what a powerful presentation. And you've really d done your homework. And what you said, what our decision will convey, but it will also convey our ability and requirements to follow the laws that have been enacted by the state, by the courts, and by the county council as well. So we have to abide by those as well. So our decision has to take in a number of factors. Um, I will say this. Um, I, you know, the la one of the last things you said, you had to drive 45 minutes somewhere to get to get something healthy, which um, kind of surprised me because I know we have embarked, the, re the report that you are all are referring to is our own, um, the uh, Park and Planning's um, Planning Department study on, on, on um, uh, health disparities and, and a healthy food for all Prince Georgians. And so, and that's been updated. So we're very, very appreciative to have that. We, we it's already in the record. We can take administrative notice of that. But we also, we've embarked on efforts, so we have an, uh, an increased amount of um, farmers markets, and we've actually leased land to people for to, to have, so that they could do farming and grow their own vegetables, and so there are more and more and more of those um, leased uh, plots to people for to promote healthy eating, and we have more and more farmers markets throughout the county. I just went to two of them on Saturday. So that throughout the county, we've now have engaged with Lidl's um, to have you know um, um, some up, more upscale um, um, grocery stores and chains. We now have Wegmans. We now have Whole um, Whole Foods as well. It's, it's so we're wonderful. We're we're proceeding along that route. The issue of um, I know you talked about we, that we have the authority, and you mentioned 27-527 and 27-528B about our required findings. And yes, we have to make those required findings. Unfortunately, um, what the health we have to send out lots and lots of referrals, and those referrals are by law advisory. And the other thing that we have to do is um, when, as was stated earlier by Mr. Horn, when a um, a use is permitted, as the district council has already determined that this particular use is permitted, then we can't say, okay, but this type of restaurant is permitted and this type is not. The whole gamut of uses in that category are then permitted. Yes, we can urge, we all do urge, but we cannot re make that re a requirement. Um, so I... Um, I, yeah, I really, really thank you for your presentation because it was very, very informative and, um, and you really, really did your homework. And um, I'm going to, uh, um, when we finish, I'll have our, um, our own uh, council respond to um, the, the provisions in the zoning ordinance that you referenced. Um, and let's see if there's any questions of you. Um, Madam Vice Chair. Again, Madam Chair, no questions, but certainly would like to thank her for coming. And as a foodie, I, I had to, uh, I have to run around the county and find the appropriate food to eat. And so we do have that option in this county, and I'm tremendously grateful. We're not where we want to be, but we certainly have come a very, very long way in being able to provide quality food for our citizens. And, and uh, I would encourage her to continue to look for those spots that we do have in the county, and we can find them. Even those of us who are foodies can actually find ways of eating healthy food. And thank you so very much for coming, and your comments were absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Commissioner Washington. No questions, Madam Chair, uh, but I would also like to thank Ms. Burgess, and I would also like to associate myself with your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, Commissioner Geraldo. No, you're muted. You're muted. And I said something so profound also. I agree with oh, <laughs> you. hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I just want to uh, follow the comments of my fellow commissioners and the chair. 
Uh, and Ms. Burgess, I want to thank you. Uh, we're well aware, uh, and our department works on those things. That's why we issue those reports. And we're always encouraging to try to relocate other types of food options for our residents. But they do exist in our county. You don't have to go to Bethesda, trust me. So I want to thank you uh, again for uh, preparing today and for your comments. Thank you so much. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn to Ms. Simmons. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Ms. Simmons, you're on. Um, good day, Madam Chair and the Planning Board. My name is Angela Simmons, and okay, I'm Ms. a homeowner Simmons. in Casper Community and a member of the Brandywine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance. Okay, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, Ms. Simmons, hold on one second because we're getting some static, and we're going to mute the others so that we can hear you clearly. Okay. Okay. We're done? Okay. All right, Ms. Simmons, you may resume. Okay. okay. Thank you. Good day, Madam Chair and the Planning Board. My name is Angela Simmons, and I'm a homeowner in the Chasburg community and a member of the Brandywine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance. The alliance was formed by homeowners concerned about the overwhelming growth of unhealthy establishments in Brandywine. I am here today to address the harmful aspect of Brandywine Village SDP 1802. Health starts long before illness, our families, homes, and even our jobs. Most Prince Georgians experience barriers to good health due to intrusion factors in their lives. These factors are social determinants of health and can make caring for your health more challenging. Social determinants of health are important due to its impact on individuals and populations. As you know, it comes with income, education, race, ethnicity, transportation, housing, environment, food access, and health care. SDOP 1802 comes with concerns for our community. The project highlights a key component of social determinants of health and that it's uh, unhealthy food options. Unhealthy food options shortens our life expectancy. Our neighborhood is filled with military families, business owners, along with white collar, blue collar professionals. On the 14th of May, District Council Member Sidney Harrison and Council Member at Large Calvin Hawkins II hosted a virtual town hall meeting on social determinants of health. We were happy to see our representative spearhead this topic. We commend him for addressing the issue, and we hope that this decision made for this SDP for future zoning request will urge the zoning board to think about long-term effects for their, of their approvals. Brandywine Village leasing agent KLMD has a considerable amount of business in the county. Unfortunately, his clientele has a list of very um, few healthy establishments. If Brandywine Village obtains approval to proceed, we're looking at 7-Eleven, Tropical Smoothie, Taco Bell for starters. The developer, Joe Caputo, said in a recent conversation, um, conference call, that Taco Bell is the second healthiest establishment in the country. We understand his intentions was to sell, is to sell the idea of Taco Bell in our neighborhood, but at the end of the day, Taco Bell is still considered as a fast food establishment. I suppose developers would like um, for us to eat the second worst establishment, which is fast food. Mr. Caputo is not a nutritionist, just a developer. I have worked in public health for 20 years, and I've never heard of reputable organizations such as American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, or even the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics supporting any fast food establishment, especially Taco Bell, as a leader in any type of healthy category. This only proves that the developer granted, if granted approvals for zoning, should meet certain requirements not to undermine the county's goals in creating a healthy environment for their residents. COVID-19 revealed the ugly truth about our health status and contributing factors are unlikely to be eating unhealthy food. KLMB secures leasing for tenants who have plans on securing anyone willing to occupy the space. We know that there are local farmers and farmers markets in the area, but they are far in between and not enough in Southern Maryland. The county fought to get Wegmans here, let's not stop there. I understand developers have the right of selecting their tenants, but they also need to hear our concerns and desires for a better community. And in closing, Brandywine is a growing and thriving community. We deserve better treatment and better establishments. I'd like to thank you, Madam Chair and the board for allowing me to speak. Okay, thank you, Ms. Simmons. Um, and 
it, it's your right to speak. So it's not like we allow it. We, we welcome it because it's your right. And um, so a couple of things I wanted to ask you, and I meant to ask Ms. Burgess the same thing, um, because I think Ms. Burgess said that the developer did not reach out to the, um, the neighbors there. And, and or, or, But you are both part of the Brandywine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance. Is that an organization that is registered with the planning department? Do you happen to know that? No, ma'am. Now, it actually came about because we all had a, um, a general interest in a, be a better neighborhood for, um, within health I'm sorry, a better healthy neighborhood for um, establishments within Brandywine. Okay. We met back in March at a, um, at a HOA meeting, and that's when we found out about the development. So it kind of started from there. Okay, so let, let me just say this for future reference. Um, so what happens is when an, when a developer is proposing um, an application, um, they have to send notice to the immediately adjoining neighbors, um, any previous uh, parties of record, and also um, um, registered organizations that are in the vicinity. So that the organizations that are registered with us. So this your your Brandywine Healthy Neighborhood Alliance is is a new organization. So you if it's an official organization, you may want to register with us in our planning department, and we can reach out to you to let you know how to do that. And that means that if something else comes along in this neighborhood, in this vicinity, then the organization itself will receive notice. And that's notice before an application is filed. And then you get notice, um, those same parties get notice once the application is filed. And, and the phone number and the contact information is then for the developers on the letter. And you have the ability to reach out if you'd like for them to come to a, a homeowners association meeting or something to present. So um, that's just one thing for for you to think about in the future to make sure that you're registered so you so nothing gets by you. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is you know we really appreciate your comments. You've all worked so very hard, and I, and I think as as I was trying to say earlier, and um, commit and Vice Chair Bailey said, and uh, Commissioner Geraldo said, we're we're not where we would like to be in this county. But we've made a lot of strides. We're not done yet. And luckily, you're in the vicinity of, of our new, um, what we call Southern Area Aquatics and Recreation Center, what we call SARC. And when we reopen again, that's a wonderful place to be. So, um, and, and it's a huge um, um, boon for uh, Brandywine, too. So that's an aside, but it's, it's just a wonderful facility. We, we have nothing like it, so it's just beautiful. And hopefully you get to, to go there. Um, but you mentioned also that you know you thank the county council too for their comments and their presentation, and not necessarily this council, the, the current members on this council, but as the county council as a legislative body which declared these uses as permitted uses. So we don't, as I said, we don't have the legal authority to cherry pick about which types of restaurants or which types of fast food places are are, are um, can be allowed and which cannot. Once once something is deemed a permitted use, then it's a permitted use. All we can do is urge, and I think and and I think developers are hearing more and more and more, and which is why they're starting to bring more options to the table. Um, um, we're, again, you're so right. We're not where we need to be yet, but I think we we continue to be a work in progress. Um, so so keep working with the developers and 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 um, Mr. Caputo, Mr. Horn. Mr. Tedesco, everyone needs to continue to hear what the communities are saying as well, because they matter. Our residents matter. Um, so with that, I'm going to see if there are any questions. Madam Vice Chair? No questions, but again, thank you, citizens, for coming. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, C Commissioner Washington? No questions, uh, but thank you, Ms. Simmons. Okay. C um, Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. I just want to thank Ms. Simmons and repeat the comments earlier and your comments, Madam Chair, in terms of the efforts that we're doing to improve the uh, the eating establishments and the healthiness of this county. Yeah. And, and thank you so much. And, and just please make sure you get registered. Okay, so um, Mr. Hunt, Mr. Bossy, you will, you will help them with that? Yes, Madam Chair. This is James yes, Hunt. Mission okay. Tour. Okay, thank you. Um, our next person, speaker is Valerie Davis.
Hello, thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Hello? Yeah, we, we hear Hi, you. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is, um, greetings, Madam Chair and the Planning Board Committee. My name is Valerie Davis, and I, too, am a homeowner in Chasford and a member of the Brand New Wine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance. And I don't want to belabor the um, food swamp issue, and I'm in agreement with the previous um, testimony, but I do want to just note that we performed a survey in our neighborhood and just wanted to read a couple of the um, constituents quotes from the survey if that's permissible. Sure. So we um, received some responses and one of our constituents response was, and I quote, it is vital to have healthier options in our community as we are raising young children and many older residents that have moved here after retirement. Our community is one of the largest in the state of Maryland, yet we have the least when it comes to our healthier grocery stores, restaurants, and fast food. I work in Virginia and frequently shop at their Wegmans, Harris Teeters, and Trader Joe's. Why should I continue to spend my money in the neighboring states? I pay lots of money in taxes here in Maryland, Prince George's County, and would rather invest, reinvest in my community. I have a diabetic child whom we raised on healthy foods, home-cooked meals, and would rather continue to do so. However, if and when we, we'd like to eat out, why should our options only be Nasty McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, I urge you to take into consideration our residents, homeowners, and 20613 Chadford and our concerns. And another constituent quoted, we, the residents of Brandywine, Maryland, deserve to have healthier food establishments, such as fresh juice bars, salad bars, Wegmans, whole foods, organic options, farmers markets, etc. We are not the dumping ground for these unhealthy options that are being forced upon us and we deserve far better in our community. So that just concludes my testimony and thank you for the opportunity to speak before you and voice the concerns of our community. Um, thank you so very, very much. We appreciate your time and your, and your comments. So next, um, um, if, um, any, let's see if there's any questions of Ms. Davis. Okay, Commissioner um, Washington. No questions, but thank you Ms. Davis for your testimony. Madam Vice Chair. No questions, but again, I'd like to thank the citizens for coming, for um, speaking. Okay, Commissioner Geraldo. No questions. Thank you, Ms. Davis, for your comments. Okay, the other thing I'd like to do is, um, it, it, one of the things I'd like to respond to Ms. Davis about, and others have mentioned this too, um, and Ms. Davis said that she goes to, um, um, you know, she works in Virginia, and she, there's some places that she goes to in Virginia, and she said, like, well, Whole Foods and Wegmans and Harris Teeter, and I forgot we do have a Harris Teeter in, in Prince George's as well now, too, so that's good. But uh, um, one of the things she mentioned um, was about farmer's markets, and I think I'd like to turn to our planning director. Um, I know we have a brochure that tells you where all the farmer's markets are in the county. I don't know if that's on, on our website or not. If it's not on our website, maybe we can put it. Um, and not all of them are open during this COVID environment. Some have, st you know, the with the uh, after the state of emergency, um, the governor and now our county executive has permitted uh, some of our farmers markets to reopen, and they have only re reopened fairly recently. But they are throughout the county, so I just want to mm -hmm. make sure make sure that you. Uh, do do have that um, information, and, and and if not, we can get it to you one way or the other. Do you? Um, do, um, I don't know for sure, but I well, well, we're checking to see if it's online, or or and we can make sure we get that available to you. It's a start. It's you know, it's a continuum, but we're still not where we want okay. to be. Um, thank you. Okay, and next we have our final speaker is Jennifer Jackson. Oh no, I wanted to see if there were any. Did anyone have any questions of Ms. Davis? No questions, Madam Chair. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? I have no questions, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Davis. We appreciate your comments. Um, Jennifer Jackson? Present. Okay, so um, do, do you wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. You're, you're on. All right, good day, Madam Chair and the planning board. 
Uh, my name is Jennifer Jackson, and I am also a homeowner in the Chatsville Lane community. I am also a member of the Brandy Wine Healthy Neighborhoods Alliance, where we simply strive to maintain the safety, healthy, and peaceful environment right here in the great Prince George County. And thank you, Madam Chair, for your advice to put our organization on the map. I am here to express my concerns as well as be a voice to my neighbors who will be affected by this development. What repercussion of this commercial development that residents within the Chester community as well as other surrounding communities will have to endure is increased traffic congestion. Simply put, this development will cause excessive rim loss and safety concerns at the intersection of 301 and Chester Drive. Chaffer Drive is a primary entrance and exit point for the Chaffer community. This road directs traffic flow for all residents, which easily totals over a thousand people. This project will potentially cause more traffic congestion with heavy construction trucks and equipment. This is a concern because not only will it impede normal commuting for the residents, it will cause major traffic jams and confusion. This project also has the potential to create major safety concerns and compromise our well-being with heavy trucks entering and exiting. My home personally faces this, this proposed development, and the proximity deeply concerns me. Residents within Chasford have an active and vibrant life. On any given day, you will see residents walking, running, and bicycling. You will also see people walking their dogs, mothers and fathers enjoying outdoor activities with their children. Please be concerned that additional heavy trucks entering and exiting the Chaffer community increases risk of incident. Chaffer residents turning into the community southbound will have to be extremely careful of traffic entering and exiting the new strip mall as there is potential for accidents due to the, the close proximity of the Chatsford entrance and the exit of the strip mall. As it stands, when exiting the community, residents have to avoid drivers who avoid the red light at Chatsford Timothy Branch Drive by coming into the community from 301 South and quickly exiting back onto 301 South. The entrance and exit of this strip mall will certainly add to the stress of residents who enter and exit the community. This concludes my testimony. Thank you all for this platform to discuss concerns on behalf of the Chatsford Landing community. Thank you so very much, Ms. Jackson. We appreciate your comments. Um, I'm going to see if the board has any questions of you, um, but and, and then I'm going to um, ask um, Mr. Horn if he would ha ask uh, Mr. Lenhart, present Mr. Lenhart to address some of the traffic, okay? Um, let's see if the board has any questions first. Madam Vice Chair? No questions, but again, thank thank you very much for um, your testimony. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Uh, C Commissioner Geraldo? I have no questions, but thank you also, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, um, okay, Mr. Horn. Can thank you again, uh, Madam Chairman and the members of the Planning Board. I think uh, Mr. Lynn Hardy is on. I do want to say, as mentioned in the presentation, though, that, uh, you know, Mr. Bossy pointed out the state, 301 is a, a state road, and the State Highway Administration has already weighed in on this as well, uh, as, as well as the uh, County for Chatsford Road. But I'll, I'll let uh, Mr. Lynn Hart, uh elaborate. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I will say, uh, in, in 1803, the case that's following is that there is a, um, he, he has uploaded all of the traffic uh, uh, you know, information and stuff with reference to this entire site. So let me, let me defer to Mr. Lenhart. So let me say this, Mr. Horn, because Mr. Tedesco raised it and you raised it as well. Um, and um, I am going to incorporate the pertinent um, um, record of this case, I, um, item 12, into um, the, the record of the next case, which is um, the, a specific design plan for the 7-Eleven at Brandywine Village, um, and vice versa. We have, all, we have um, several citizen exhibits, um, which I originally had for item 12, which are pertinent and have been referred to in item 11, 
um, the, the commercial. So we're going to um, make sure that they are um, part of the record for both cases. So all the citizen exhibits, all your exhibits, and we will incorporate the testimony as well. So when we, when we get to item 11, we don't need to be duplicative. So, yeah, um, thank you. And, and it was parcel one where the 711 is, is uh, adjacent to Chatsford. And I think Ms. Jackson was referring to the, tra the traffic on Chatsford. And that's why I wanted to mention that it will definitely be in 1803. Uh, and, and, and we want to, you know, accept that by reference early. But anyway, I'd rather Mr. Lenhart, if he's available to address it. Okay. Um, Mr. Lenhart? Yes, good afternoon. Um, and um, for the record, Michael Lenhart with Lenhart Traffic Consulting. Uh, so uh, this project is part of an underlying preliminary plan of subdivision 4-12007 for Brandywine Village. Um, that uh, project was approved um, many years ago and uh, the C for public facilities was tested at the time of preliminary plan of subdivision as required by the ordinance. Um, that is when adequate public facilities is tested. Um, uh, Mr. Horn did reference some traffic information that was updated for the subsequent case today. Um, however, that, that that's not really an adequacy test. That was more looking at some access issues that were raised by Mr. Burton on your staff. Um, uh, the uh, a little bit of history here for uh, the folks that are listening. Uh, the Brandywine Road Club was established by a park and planning um, with the help of DPWT and State Highway Administration back in the 1990 time frame. Um, it was determined at that point that um, the existing and future traffic volumes along Route 301 in this area were roughly 90%, give or take, uh, through traffic. That was regional traffic beyond the extent of Prince George's County. And um, the, the level of that regional traffic made it difficult for development to occur and frankly, none of the develop, development that exists today would have occurred without the creation of the Brandywine Road Club. Um, that uh, road club requires at the time of preliminary plan, traffic study is done, uh, and there were, uh, there are um, fees that have been established um, per unit for residential and per square foot for commercial. Uh, and those fees go into the Brandywine Road Club uh, and uh, improvements have been identified to be built over time. Some of improvements have already been built. Uh, some of the widening that's occurred on Route 301 and then uh, there are uh, future improvements that will be built as well using those Road Club fees. Um, again, this was tested at the time of preliminary plan. These uh, commercial uses will be paying their fair share into the road club prior to the issuance of their building permits. Um, and so it was determined that that uh, will satisfy the adequacy. And um, it, it's acknowledged and understood that Route 301 is failing. That's, um, that, that's never been um, an issue or, um, you know, uh, or misunderstood. And so um, the whole idea of the road club is to put in place um, funding sources and improvements that will um, eventually create a network, a road network that will um, eliminate and remove those failures. Was that it? Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Lenhart. The, um, and um, Mr. Burton, do you have anything else to add? That. For the record, Len Burton in transportation section, all I can say is that I will align myself with the comments made by Mr. Lenhart. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me see if our board members have any questions of Mr. Lenhart regarding the traffic situation. Um, um, Madam Vice Chair? No questions. No comments. Okay. Um, Commissioner Washington? 
No question. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner um, Gerardo. I have no questions, Madam Chair. I just want to uh, thank Mr. Lenhart for the explanation. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, with that, um, Mr. Horn, do you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, ma'am. Again, we just pretty much stand on uh, the staff report and the, and the uh, proposed amendments to the conditions. I do want to say, as you know, speaking for Mr. Caputo, if I could for a second, that uh, he has met with these individuals again, either by phone or video, and have heard their concerns and understand uh, the, uh, the the issue of um, the health related uh, food services and stuff, and and will again be speaking with them because he made contact. They each, uh, I shouldn't say they each, but several people who spoke today have his cell phone number in contact. Uh, as they, uh, you know, try to, um, to finish out the the uh, retail department of it, Tropical Smoothie again is there. Uh, there's, there'll be a bank, but you know, there was the talk of another restaurant that's here in the county that is of high quality. Uh, but again, when COVID nineteen kicked in, that that sort of uh, made that difficult. Uh, but again, they have his information, he has theirs, and he's committed to continue to work with them to try to address, uh, you know, the overall issue that we have in the county as well, and specifically in this particular area. So just so, want to say he, he's heard the concerns. So let me say, let me add to that, Mr. Horn. So thank you, and Mr. Caputo, for listening and hearing the concerns of the community. I do understand that there's, there's a balancing that's required. Um, I know we've had a hard time for decades in Prince George's County trying to recruit some use, some, um, t some types of stores here. We, we've, we've recruited um, Nordstrom's. We go to the International Shopping Center Conference every year to recruit high-end stores. We finally got the the Nordstrom's rack. We didn't get the Nordstrom's. We got the Nordstrom's rack. We've gotten some other things. We've it, it took us forever to get the Whole Foods. It took us forever to get the Lidl's. It took us forever to get the um, Harris Teeter, things of that nature. Um, and it's just been very, very hard. And we and and not to say that most developers are really, really trying to get these um, high higher end uses um, in terms of retail, in terms of restaurants, in terms. Um, um, but sometimes it is hard, and in this particular case, you know, maybe COVID affected things. I know ten years ago it was the recession that that changed everything, and, and it, it's it's very very hard. And once, um, and I will turn to our legal counsel, Mr. Goldsmith, who will be ready to address, um, I'm, I'm sure, um, the permitted uses. But once, you know, once it's been legislative deter legislatively determined, we do not have the authority to pick those uses. But it is imperative, all the nonetheless for um, developers coming into our beloved community, and that's our beloved Prince George's County, whether you're at the very southern end of it or the very northern end of it, to hear our concerns, to hear the concerns of the citizens. Um, we can't, we have limited jurisdiction in, in terms of being able to force you to do certain things, but it is imperative that you hear and really earnestly try to address the concerns that, that are raised. Because, um, well, it's important, and you come back, so it's important. So, uh, Mr. Goldsmith, can you please um, address the issue of the use or anything else that you care, care to add? Madam Chair, uh, Peter Goldsmith, uh, Senior Counsel for the record. I just want to say I agree with the Commissioner's statements concerning the authority of the Board. Uh, the Board, Cannot choose which use goes into what property. Uh, can only evaluate the you can only evaluate the application uh, before it and consider the criteria that the district council adopted in the zoning ordinance. And uh, there were two sections that I believe were mentioned, uh, and those two sections do not contradict that. Uh, section twenty seven five twenty seven deals with the contents of a specific design plan, and it's specific and it. It just it, it discusses what should be included in the plan, 
uh, such as a, a, a reproducible site plan showing buildings, functional uses, uh, reproducible architectural plans, reproducible landscape plan, type two creek tree conservation plan, and NRI, et cetera. And then the other question that was mentioned, um, I'm just going to scroll down to it, was 27528B. And um, although it does mention health, safety, and welfare, uh, it is specifically addressing a specific design plan for infrastructure. And uh, what's before the board right now is an F. Uh-oh. You froze. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, Mr. Goldsmith. We can't hear you anymore. Mr. Goldsmith. Stop, stop, stop. He's still talking. Maybe they can hear him. I can't. Okay. Um, I I was unable to hear Mr. Goldsmith for a minute, but was everyone else able to hear him? Yes. We okay. Were. Yeah. Okay. So that's on my end over here. Okay. But thank you. Okay. Um, just it was just the tail end. Okay. Um, but thank you. Uh, with me, Madam Chair, would you like me to repeat what I said? Just the last maybe sixty seconds of it. Oh, okay. What I was talking about was uh, five. Uh, 27528B uh, only deals with, with an SDP for infrastructure. And while it talks about um, the public's health, safety, and welfare, but it's in the context of preventing offsite property damage and preventing environmental degradation uh, to safeguard the public's health, safety, and welfare. And that's, again, in the context of an SDP for infrastructure, so it does not apply. Okay. This is an SDP for physical development. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Goldsmith. Um, okay, so um, so that concludes our, 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 all of our speakers. Um, Mr. Horn, you have the opportunity to close out if you have anything else you care to say. Uh, no, ma'am, I, I won't uh, elaborate. I just want to thank you, the board, for your uh, time uh, this morning. And I think we're, you know, we're pretty clear of that we are very supportive of this. And uh, again, as I mentioned, we'll continue to work with the community, uh, Mr. Caputo will, uh, to uh, try to affect uh, change. Uh, every little bit helps. Mr. Caputo? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, we, we are definitely committed to not just Brandywine, but Prince George's County. Um, I've been developing in the county for 30 years, um, and, and we are listening. And, and as a matter of fact, we work with Councilman uh, Harrison's office to uh, to set up a restaurant initiative uh, through uh, working with KLNB to make sure that every healthy food choice um, understands and knows that Brandywine is open for business and moreover that Prince George's County is open for business. So um, we're marketing this, this particular property in a specific way to try to bring better choices. Um, and, and while Taco Bell is not the healthiest out of the fast food guys, we think it's uh, we made a conscious decision to try to to be better. Um, so in that category, I think we've, we've hit that mark. Uh, and the reason we selected the Tropical Smoothie uh, Cafe was because uh, they do offer some very good, healthy choices that, um, that we appreciate. So we're not just leasing to anybody who comes along. Um, and I've made a commitment that the remaining space uh, that we have in the center, and, I, and I've made this commitment to Councilman Harrison and uh, and to the to the citizens that we would continue to work with them to make sure that we identified um, some really good uses, some healthy food choices, and uh, you know we've got probably the next year to really find some good quality uh, choices. So we're committed to that. Um, you know I'm an active on-site developer. Uh, I'm going to be you know not only developing the property but I'll also be managing it when it's done. So. 
they'll, they'll have a, a voice uh, and they'll have somebody that they can hold accountable. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to be moving this forward and um, I'm happy to be working with them. And I do appreciate everybody's time, um, uh, especially during these times. Um, uh, everybody's effort is uh, will hopefully, you know, again, make Brandywine and Prince George's County um, much better going forward. So we're, we're happy to be part of that. Thank you. Um, I, I want to turn um, back to Mr. Bossy for a second. I just want to make sure, I, I'm going to be calling for a motion soon, but I want to make sure that we're clear, um, Mr. Bossy, because I know that um, uh, Mr. Caputo proffered to maintain that fence in perpetuity. So I want to make sure that that's clear, number one. Um, number, you know, um, Number two, I want to, um, before, we, before I call for the motion, I want to thank every citizen who participated um, today. You all did your homework and you were extraordinarily patient with all the requests for continuances um, and, so, uh, and then presented so eloquently today. The, uh, the thing I do need to address is that we have a document with, I think, um, oh, maybe 375 um, signatures on it saying that, um, um, that will be in the record of both um, both SDPs for the Brandywine um, Village Commercial and the 7-Eleven at Brandywine Village. And that is what's, that, it's a petition. And I do want to comment that petitions um, with a number of people signing on to it saying they're, they're just opposed to it, that's called plebiscite. And the courts have ruled, and, and Mr. Goldsmith can correct me if I'm wrong, the courts have ruled that we cannot make a decision purely based on the number of people who have signed a petition, the number of people in the neighborhood who are for or against anything. It's not the sheer number, it's the content. Um, and so, um, it, it, you know, that's called like zoning and land use by plebiscite. So the, the Supreme Court, uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the court, Maryland Court of Appeals, and the Court of Special Appeals has ruled extensively on that. And, um, you know, Mr. Goldsmith, I don't know if you want to address that at all. No, he's... No, I don't have anything to add to that. Okay. Um, so there, there's a whole litany of cases to that regard. So I do want to thank you for submitting it, but, I, but we cannot base our decision just on the sheer number. We do have your powerful presentations that, for today, and Mr. Caputo's commitment to continue that dialogue. So that's very, very important. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I, I'm here with the planning director who went and checked about the um, um, food, um, the farmer's markets. And there is a list of farmers, farmer's markets and we will make them available to Mr. Mr. Hunt and Mr. Bossy who have your addresses and we will send you the link to the list of farmer's markets throughout the county. But as a result of this today, we are going to ensure that that link is also posted on our website. And then I would remind everyone in Brandywine to keep an eye on the SARC, the Southern Area Aquatics and Recreation Center when we reopen. Um, it's just fabulous and it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to have in Brandywine. So with that, I'm going to look to the board to call for a motion. Um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Washington, uh, I move that we adopt the findings of staff in addition to incorporating um, as proffered findings, uh, and they're currently labeled as items six and seven in applicant exhibit number four, and as such approve SDP-1802 and TCP2 dash zero zero two dash two zero one four dash zero five along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and as further mo modified by applicant exhibit number one and the, uh, let it let the motion also reflect um, conditions one Q and one R uh, as a, a additional proffered conditions by uh, the applicant and as read into the record by staff, in addition to uh, including where appropriate, uh, and I'm asking staff to ensure that it's appropriate, the other, uh, the additional proffered condition with regards to maintaining the fence into perpetuity. Second, Commissioner Geraldo. So we have a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Is there discussion? I think under discussion, I, th I think um, 
I, we've all said it throughout the course of the hearing, uh, but I think the only thing we'd like to just emphasize in discussion is just how much we appreciate the citizen input, because um, it matters. It really Absolutely. does. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Um, I'm going to call Madam for the- Chair? Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Is this someone? Is this Madam one of Chair, our, yes. Um, first, I'm in the yes, middle of a vote. Yes, this one of the residents, and I'm. I'm in the middle of. I'm a, sorry. Okay. Okay, so I'm in the middle of the vote. Um, um, so, um, okay, we have um, the vote. We have a motion and a second. I'm going to call for the vote, Commissioner uh, Washington. Uh, Commissioner um, Washington. Aye. Madam Vice Chair. I vote aye. Um, Commissioner Geraldo. I vote aye, Madam Chair. Okay, the ayes have it for zero. Okay. We are now, uh, let me say this, it's almost 1230. We are now going to go, we have two more cases left, and we're going to go to the specific design plan for 7-Eleven at Brandywine Village. We will be breaking at one o'clock for lunch, whether or not we're done. So, um, so, um, I'm going to do a check and make sure we have all the people who have signed up to speak for this. Okay. Um, um, Mr. Bossy. Present. Ms. Kosak. Present. Mr. Tedesco. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm present. Kim Finch. <clears throat> Kim Finch. Yes, present. Okay, thank you. Glenn Burton? Present. Ben Ryan? Present. Okay. Um, Nicholas Speech? Present. Laverna Olkowski? Present. Chantel Marino? Present. Rianne Wilson? Present. Meredith Byer? Present. Mike Lenhart. Present. Joseph Caputo. Present, Madam Chair. Arthur Horn. Present. Sarah Combs. Present. Okay. Uh, Jamila Balamani. Present. Tashara Burgess. Present. Um, Angela Simmons. Present. <clears throat> Jennifer Jackson. Present. Okay. Um, those are the, that's the list of people I had signed up for item um, 11. Okay. So um, now we have a number of exhibits in the record as well, and I am incorporating the record of item 12 into item into this case item 11. So um, okay. So that's it. Thank you, um, Mr. Bossy. You're on. Okay. Uh, yes, Madam Chairwoman and members of the board, good afternoon. Uh, for the record, Adam Bossi with the Urban Design Section. Uh, this case, as you mentioned, is item 11, the specific design plan SDP 1803 for the proposed 7-Eleven at Brandywine Village. Uh, so this SDP does propose a 3,062 square foot 7-Eleven food and beverage store and a gas station with eight fueling islands. Uh, the hearing on this case was continued from your July 16th agenda. Again, these were for the same reasons as the last case waiting on the district council's final order. Uh, as with the last hearing, the council's final order has been added to your additional backup material. Um, and the applicant in this case has submitted uh, additional backup documents as well. These are labeled exhibits A through E. I do want to point out that exhibit A requests to amend a single condition of the staff report and those other exhibits B through E are uh, provided in support of that revision request. I'll discuss those a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, and as you mentioned, there are uh, obviously a number of, of items and concerns that were uh, uh, associated with SDP 1802 that are applicable in this case. Uh, with that being said, Madam Chairwoman, slides two through eight in this presentation are very similar to those in the last presentation. Would you like me to review those quickly, or would you like to skip to skip, more of the meat? To get to the to get to the heart of the matter, because um, we've incorporated the record. So thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. 
All right, here on slide eight, I do just want to point out uh, that the yellow outlined area does show the area of parcel one, which uh, is subject of SDP 1803. Uh, so if we could move on to slide nine, we'll, we'll get started. Uh, the subject site is circled here in red roughly and is shown uh, here in context with the site access road, the Taco Bell and commercial buildings that were uh, subject of SDP 1802 that we just discussed. Uh, and here with this application, 1803, it's proposing the full development of parcel one. Uh, slide 10, please. As shown, the proposed development includes the food and beverage store in the west central portion of the site and a gas station canopy with eight fuel dispensers to the east close to the US 301. Access is provided at two points to the north, north and south of the building. Uh, here in the image, that's to the left and right of it, respectively. Parking is shown uh, to the south and east of the building, with the trash enclosure and loading space north of the building adjacent to that northern driveway. Sidewalks and bike racks are also provided near the building. Uh, recommended conditions are included in the staff report for minor adjustments to associated plan labeling, again, for the bike racks and sidewalks. Uh, not shown here, but of note, are that the SDP does also provide sufficient exterior lighting and the landscaping that is provided um, generally conforms with the landscape manual, but staff has recommended uh, a series of, of conditions to address some minor minor issues with the uh, landscaping as noted on page 18 of the staff report. Slide 11, please. Uh, this exhibit shows the general vehicular circulation pattern and truck turning radius throughout the site. Given the proximity of the southern driveway, again, to the left of the building, uh, to the intersection of Chadsford Drive on the commercial access road. Uh, staff did discuss in our report that we had concerns regarding circulation and safety in terms of the southern driveway, uh, specifically to egressing from the southern driveway onto the commercial access road and Chadsford Drive. Uh, staff, staff did recommend condition 1K, which is in the staff report, which would essentially have required the applicant to restrict uh, egress and exiting from that southern driveway. Uh, after publication of the staff report, the applicant and transportation staff did continue to discuss this concern, and the applicant did provide uh, more detailed information to show that the southern driveway could operate safely and effectively for ingress as well as egress. Uh, this additional information is reflected in applicants' exhibits uh, that uh, I mentioned at the start of the presentation that are included in your backup. Uh, through the review of this more detailed information, staff was convinced that the Southern Driveway access could operate at an acceptable level. And as such, uh, applicants exhibit A request to strike condition 1K from the staff report, and staff does agree with the requested removal of condition 1K. Slide 12, please. Uh, so this slide and the following two show the proposed signage with this SDP. Uh, the sign package that is proposed uh, for 7-Eleven is typical for the brand in use and has been demonstrated in other 7-Elevens that this board has reviewed. In general, the proposed signage package conforms with the applicable requirements of the zoning ordinance, subject to a couple of adjustments as provided in condition 1B on page uh, 17 of the staff report. We could move to slide 13, please. Uh, these conditions do include the removal of uh, two freestanding signs from the SDP. Uh, the first of those is shown in the lower central area. There are actually two of these monument and, uh, identity and fuel price signs proposed along 301. Staff has recommended the removal of one of the two. Uh, slide 14, please. Uh, the other sign that staff has recommended to be removed through conditions uh, is the large monument sign. This is shown at the lower left portion of this image. Uh, this is actually the same uh, uh, sign that is provided with SDP 1802, uh, so it's not necessary with this application. Slide 15, please. Uh, the rectangular shaped single story 711 building elevations do show a fairly typical facade design for the brand and the use. Uh, some architectural interest is provided through the breaking up of the roof line, which is uh, with some raised sections on its corners and above the main entry, uh, which is on the eastern facade of the building. Uh, this is most evident in the top image here. 
The facade of the building is to be clad with stone veneer and EFIS panels in complementary tones of brown and tan. Slide 16, please. Shown in the upper portion of the slide are the elevations for the gas station canopy. Surfacing to be utilized is the same as on the building. On the lower images here show the proposed trash enclosure, which again is to be clad with stone veneer and EFIS, same as the building and gas station canopy. Uh, in conclusion, staff recommends that the project proposed in this SDP conforms with the applicable requirements of the zoning ordinance and prior approvals subject to the conditions included in the technical staff report. Uh, staff does recommend to the planning board uh, approval of SDP 1803 and TCP 2-002-2014-06 for 711 Brandywine Village with the conditions uh, included in the technical staff report as amended by applicants exhibit A, which again removes condition 1K only. This concludes staff's presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bossi. Um, let's see if there are any questions. Madam Vice Chair? No questions, Madam Chair. Uh, um, Commissioner Washington? No questions, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Geraldo? No, no questions. Okay. Um, thank you. With that, uh, Mr. Tedesco. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Thank you for, again thank for the you. record, Matthew Tedesco, the law firm of Matthew Hosey, here on behalf of the applicant in this case, which is 7-Eleven Incorporated. Uh, along with me, my co-counsel, Mr. Arthur Horn, uh, for the law firm of Shipley Horn, who represents the property owner and developer, Mr. Joe Caputo, um, who we are all familiar with given the prior case. Also uh, in attendance, you've called their names, but just I want to introduce them again. Um, Ms. Uh, Brianne Wilson, uh, Laverne Okowski with 7-Eleven, as well as Curtis Williams with 7-Eleven. Nick Speech and Mira Ganser with Bowler Engineering and Mike Lenhart uh, with Lenhart Traffic Consulting. And we also have Chantel uh, Marino with EBI Consulting. Um, I do not, I wanna, just so you know, I do not have a Curtis Williams signed up, so. Okay, okay I wasn't you. sure, but nope. I saw his name on the, um, the, on the attendee list. So yeah. I just, I didn't know if he signed up or not. I just wanted to acknowledge nope. him. He's with 7-Eleven. He's with okay. um, Ms. Okowski is, is retiring and Mr. Williams is taking her spot. So this was, this is his first one in Prince George's County and Ms. Okay. Okowski's um, retirement. So I just wanted to acknowledge him as you may be hearing his name more Okay. Um, with that, Madam Chair, uh, I wanted, I didn't get a chance the, la at 18, the 1802 case, but I want to take an opportunity to just publicly thank the citizens. They were quite patient in dealing with, uh, with us and trying to get both these applications to you over the last many months, um, dealing with the district councils um, not having hearings uh, since March 9th. Uh, they were at every one of the continuances that either Mr. Horn requested um, which he outnumbered me. I think I only requested one, but I know they were at the one I attended and I believe they're at all of Mr. Florence. And I just want to publicly thank them for their commitment, for their comments and their well thought out um, testimony today, as well as all of their exhibits. We are certainly mindful. And um, as I think Mr. Caputo said it best, we, we understand the concerns with respect to the users. Um, and I think that was the, the primary concern that they have is, is uh, the users, not necessarily the uses. Um, this property as part of the other application was uh, zoned LAC for the commercial component associated with uh, the, the Chasford development that has been completed through the residential portion of it. Um, some of the citizens that testified I, I have met throughout the course of them attending other hearings for other applications that I, I have uh, handled in the Brandywine area, um, although that's been some time since that predates COVID. Um, I, again, just want to thank them, and, and I do want to thank Ms. Burgess for her service. I think she mentioned that she was a, um, in the service, and I just want to thank her for her service to this country. Um, with that being said, Madam Chair, um, we don't really have anything to add that hasn't already been said with respect to the prior case. I know everything has been incorporated and adopted. Um, I, I did have one, well, five exhibits, but primarily one and the rest were supplemental exhibits to support the requested deletion of condition K. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I, I could say more, but I don't know if I necessarily need to. Um, so I'm happy to, 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 to submit on the staff report. 
as provided. I want to thank Mr. Bossy for his presentation, also his patience in dealing with us and trying to get these cases uh, to to you all. Um, we're happy to submit on the staff report. Uh, happy to submit on the justification statement that was provided. We do request the condition of 1K to be deleted. Um, and if the board is so inclined to uh, make that deletion in support of staff's um, concurrence of that, we would also ask that the condition, the, the finding, excuse me, finding 15B on page 15 of your staff report be modified to reflect um, the additional information that was provided and then the subsequent deletion of that condition. And with that, I'm happy to stop talking and um, take any questions. Okay, so let me first see if the board has any questions of you at this time, and then we're going to hear from as many citizens as we can hear from before we break. Okay, um, so um, Madam Vice Chair, do you have any questions? No questions, Madam Chair. Commissioner Washington? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Geraldo? Thank you, but I have no questions. Okay, thank you. I am going to turn because um, our speakers have just been so wonderful and, uh, and uh, I'm going to try to hear as many as we can hear before we break. So I'm going to start with um, Ms. Balamani. And I'm, I'm asking everyone to remember that your testimony and your presentations from the last case are also incorporated into the record of this case. So if you want to enhance it in any way, please feel free. Ms. Ms. Ba Ms. Balamani? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Good day, Madam Chair and the Planning Board. My name is Jamila Balamani, and I'm a constituent of the Chester Community in Brandywine, Maryland, and representing the Brandywine Health Neighborhoods Alliance. Now, I'll explain why the Alliance members are deeply troubled by the proposed seven level gas station. Over the last decade, decade, a number of scientific studies have shown that the public health impact of gas stations is far greater than previously thought. These impacts result from benzene and other harmful compounds released to the air from the storage cases and when we fill our cars at the pump. Our written comments include a letter from our consultant says, the fifth letter presents the scientific studies documenting the public health effects which have prompted Prince George's County and many other jurisdictions to adopt minimum public health health safety zones for new gas stations. In fact, one of these health health safety zone laws appear in section two seven dash three five eight A two of the Prince George's County zoning regulations, which requires the subject property shall be located at least 300 feet from any lot on which a school, outdoor playground, library, or hospital is located. In my written comments, you'll find an arrow from the staff PowerPoint presentation at the April 23rd, 2020 Planning Board hearing. In the aerial subject property is outlined in red. Of course, the subject property contains the proposed 7-Eleven gas station. Note that an outdoor playground is located less than 200 feet from the subject property, along with numerous homes. Therefore, the gas station would not meet the 300-foot setback requirement from outdoor playground. As, late, as explained later in the CIS letters, the most recent scientific study has shown that adverse effects of gas station emissions threaten public health at a distance of 500 feet or more. Unfortunately, unfortunately, measures are not required for new gas, gas stations that can reliably resolve the public health threat. If you wish, we can arrange for you to speak with the scientist who is arguably the leading authority on this topic in the United States. The scientists can confirm the inadequacy of the current control measures. The studies presented in the fifth letter were part of the reason why in 2015, Montgomery County increased their gas station public health safety zones from 300 to 500 feet and including homes among the list of protected land use. The Montgomery County ordinance and tax of the safety increase is also attached to our written comments. The aerial photo in my written comments shows that numerous checks for homes are located within 500 feet of the proposed gas station subject property. 
these Chasper residents are deeply troubled by the health threat posed by the proposed 7-Eleven gas pump. The Brandywine the brand area is not lacking for gas stations. According to U.S. Census Bureau data, the Brandywine area has twice as many gas stations per capita when compared to the countywide average. And another gas station is proposed for the commercial area south of 7-Eleven site. It is for these many reasons that we urge the planning board to condition 7-Eleven specific design plan approval on eliminating elimination of the proposed gas pump. Is that it? That's no. it. Okay, thank you, Ms. Balamani. We appreciate that. And um, we'll have the applicant respond to that. Let's see if the board has any questions of you at this time. Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Thank you for coming. For this your okay. comments okay commissioner washington i have no questions thank you madam chair commissioner Gerardo. i have no questions madam chair thank you uh, miss burgess um yes um madam chair and members of the board i'm going to keep it short and simple because i don't want to be redundant from my previous um testimony um, I just want to just um, just say that this has this experience, and I can say myself and the other ladies, we've worked very hard and diligent in fighting for our community. And so, you know, I, this has just been a this has been a wonderful experience. Um, it's been very tough. It has it has really opened um, my eyes and understanding um, the conditions of PG County. Um, although we may not be able to prevent some of the things that are going to be developed, but as you all can see is that we're fighters and across the street from us, we have another, um, development called Brandywine Crossing and many of the stores in Brandywine Crossing and restaurants in Brandywine Crossing pre COVID are closing. And part of the reason why those stores are closing is because no one listened to the voice of the people. So even though you, I understand from legal ramifications, there are certain things that you all cannot do, but I just say don't underestimate the voice of the people. Mr. Caputo, don't underestimate <laughs> the voice of the residents in Chasford because we sent Brandywine Crossing a strong message by not frequenting those establishments. Um, in the 12 years that I have lived here, I, I do not frequent any of the restaurants in this community. So, um, in that being said, and I just want to say one last thing, Madam Chair, you mentioned real quick about the Aquatic Center, and I think it's a beautiful center. I looked it up and I read about it, but I'm a little bit disheartened because when I look at the state of the conditions of the schools in PG County and Southern Maryland, my heart cannot be excited about that aquatic center. And that will be, that is all I have to say is that we won't give up. We'll send a message another way. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Ms. Burgess. Um, we, uh, I, I just will say this, you are fighters and we do care about our beloved Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, and so I don't think anyone will underestimate you. You've mentioned that you have a voice and you do indeed have a voice and keep that voice. Um, so uh, I just want to give you a shout out um, for having that voice, and that's and that's your right, and you should exercise. All of you should exercise your right. There are we have parameters, but within those parameters, your your voice is being heard. And Mr. Caputo, uh, well, not Mr. Uh, Mr. Cap um, everyone, I hope you're listening, Mr. Caputo in particular, um, and and um, Ms. Wilson and and um, um, Mr. Um, Olakowski. No. No, Laverna, I'm sorry, Ms. Olkowski. Okay, thank you. Um, Madam Vice Chair, any questions? No questions, but we're always pleased to see citizens from Prince George's County uh, to come before us and speak on behalf of their communities. Thank you. Uh, Commission, Commissioner Washington? No questions, Madam Chair. I associate myself strongly with Madam Vice Chair's comment. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Geraldo? Uh, I have no questions, Madam Chair, and I associate myself with all of my fellow commissioners' comments. Thank you. It's important that we hear from the community. Thank you. Um, and, uh, okay, so therefore, um, I will now turn to Ms. Simmons. 
Yes, Madam Chair. Um, hello, Madam Chair and the Planning Committee. I researched convenience stores in our community, and within a two-mile radius, KLMB leasing team has secured 7-Elevens with pretty much most of all their projects. We have 10 7-Eleven businesses in our community, and that's within a two-mile radius. I'm happy to hear that representatives from 7-Eleven is on the call today, and I am hoping that they understand that they have oversaturated our community with their establishments. I understand they are individually operated and owned. However, they should understand that we are looking for better quality um, establishments in Brandywine. And even with our neighborhood within um, 300 feet of our community, they're considering a gasoline station, which has um, its health concerns, its adverse health concerns. So um, with that said, I'm just asking that the um, board um, prohibit the 7-Eleven gas pumps. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Simmons. Um, any questions, Madam Vice Chair? No, but again, example of the amazing citizens we have in Prince George's County. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Washington? No questions, Madam Chair. Commissioner Geraldo? Uh, I have no questions, Madam Chair, and uh, I just want to thank Ms. Simmons. I understand the, uh, the relationship between uh, gas stations and health, and uh, perhaps that's something that has to be changed legislatively, but at this juncture, we have to follow what the law is. But I want to thank okay. you for the comments. Okay, thank you. Ms. Jennifer Jackson. Present. Okay. Hello. Yes, you're ready. To, we're ready for you to speak. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm not going to leave her down, but I just want to um, second Ms. Simmons. Um, <clears throat> just please, you all, just keep in mind that this gas station is close to residential homes and the playground. And with the average effects, I know it's, a, it's, it's an economical opportunity for the county, but please consider the residents and the potential health hazards that may come on the residents because of the proximity of this proposed gas station. Now, again, we're not asking you to eliminate 7-Eleven, but reconsider the gas pump, which, again, could adversely affect our health in this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, um, any questions, Madam, um, Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Giraldo? No questions. And I just associate myself with all the previous comments with regards to the citizens. Thank you for uh, testifying today. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So now, um, let's see. Um, let me go back to Mr. Tedesco because we have a few minutes. Um, Ms. Jones, right? We do have. Madam a Chair. Okay. Madam yes. Chair, this is Peter Boltzmann, Senior Counsel. Can you hear me for a second? Yes. I just want to jump in real quick um, the, and address something that the first speaker okay. uh, said. Uh, I believe she made reference to Section 27356 and the criteria. Uh, within that section, but that pertains to a gas station that is a special exception use. Um, and so in here we are dealing with a, a gas station that is a permitted use in the LAC zone. Um, so those, that, that section does not apply. Okay. Um, okay, thank you so much. All right, Mr. Tedesco, who do you want to, uh, to go now? Uh, I'll, I'll go if that's okay, Madam Chair. That's fine. And I want to thank Mr. Goldsmith for his comment. Just, just point of clarification. I think Mr. Goldsmith said 27356. Um, I believe it was 27. Uh, what was 358. Referred? 358. Yeah. Um, so just for the for the record to clarify that, and I, I align myself with Mr. Goldsmith's comments with respect to 27358 and the comments that were made. Uh, this use is a by right permitted use in the LAC zone, not subject to the special special exception requirements that are found in 27358 that were cited to with respect to certain distances that have to be met. Um, when a gas station is proposed in a zone that requires a special exception, um, there are 
Other instances outside of a special exception, for example, in the CM zone, um, the use table for the CM zone specifically calls out some, not all, but some of the 27-358 findings uh, in those applications, none of which exist in this case. So the application of that section by this board as requested by the citizens would be an erroneous conclusion of law and a misapplication of law. So I just wanted to just state that for the record. I, I, I recognize that the citizens are, are not um, attorneys and are lay, lay witnesses with respect or pro se witnesses with respect to their community and they, they love and cherish and, and um, want to defend their community. And I certainly can appreciate and respect that, but we are uh, governed by laws and we all have to work within them including with my clients. They just can't do whatever they want, wherever they want. We have to abide by the rules and regulations that are established by our legislatures. And so while that, um, while those distance limitations exist, they don't apply in this case. And um, with that, Madam Chair, I have nothing further to add. Um, we would respectfully request the board's approval of STP 1803 with the requested deletion to condition 1K and then the, uh, the, the the language in the finding 15B to be modified to incorporate the deletion or to reflect the deletion of that condition and the support of the additional information that was provided into the record. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, um, Mr. Bossi, do you have anything else to add? No, ma'am, thank you. Okay. Does the, does the board have any questions of anyone at this time? I'm, I'm going to look. No, Madam Chair. Okay. Commissioner Washington or Geraldo? I have one. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve SDP-1803 and TCP-2-002-2014 06, along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and is further modified uh, by applicant exhibit number A. And with the modification to the condition in applicant exhibit A, would ask staff to ensure that finding 15B be modified as needed to uh, reflect the deletion of uh, 1K condition. Second. We have a motion and a second um, by, second by uh, Vice Chair Bailey. Um, I'm going to call for the, is there any additional discussion? Just, I, we've said it throughout the hearings, we thank the citizens so much for coming. We do realize we have these parameters within which we have to live. Um, so we're, we're very, very thankful to you um, for, for coming and, and continue to exercise that voice. Um, nothing like good trouble. Okay. Um, uh, so is there... Um, all in favor, Madam Vice Chair? I vote aye, and I'm sure we've not heard the last of these very active citizens, and we welcome their input. Indeed. Thank you. Indeed. Um, Commissioner Washington? Here, here. Aye. Commissioner Giraldo? I vote aye, Madam Chair. Okay. The ayes have it 4-0. Thank you so very much. Okay. So now... Um, we do have one more item on the agenda. I don't, um, so I think we're not prepared to stop here just yet, so we might want to get started on that. Um, does anybody need like a five minute break? How about that? Yes, that would be a yes. So we're gonna yes. take a, we're gonna, we're gonna take a, um, you know what, we're gonna take a five to 10 minute break and then I'll be able to tell you whether we're breaking for lunch or not. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, let me make, let me do a check. Okay, there we go. So I have all four pl planning board commissioners. Um, Madam Vice Chair, I see. Present. Okay, um, Commissioner Washington. Present. Uh, Commissioner Giraldo. Present. We have Council Peter Goldsmith. Um, let me see, Mr. Burke, Thomas Burke. Present, Madam Chair. Mr. Tedesco. 
Uh, President, Madam Chair. Okay, Mark Juba. President, Madam Chair. Okay, Mr. Tedesco, you don't want us to see you, but anyway, Tom Masock. Present, Madam Chair. Noelle Smith. Present. Howard Berger. Present. Jennifer Stabler. Present. Michael Lenhart. Present. Laverna Olkowski. Present. Nicholas Speech. Present. Brianne Wilson. Present. Chantel Marino. Chantel Marino. Um, okay, your call, Mr. Tedesco. Do you, do you need her? No, we can move forward. Okay, and now we have Curtis Williams. Who signed up for this case? Yep. Curtis Williams, are you present? Curtis Williams. I, I saw him on earlier, but then I saw him sign off, so he may have had a conflict and had to jump off. Okay. Um, Ms. Okowski is on, and Ms. Wilson uh, are on. So. Okay. All right, M Mr. Burke, let's go. And we, we and we do have one exhibit there uh, on this matter, um, which is um, the Historic Preservation Commission memo. Um, Okay, so Mr. Burke. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Board. Uh, I'm Thomas Burke with the Urban Design Section. The project before you, listed as item six on the agenda, refers to detailed site plan DSP 19031 for 711 Branch Avenue, which includes a Type 2 Tree Conservation Plan TCP 2-026-2018-01. The applicant is seeking approval of a detailed site plan to develop the site with a food and beverage store, gas station, and a car wash. Slide two, please. The site is located in the southern portion of Prince George's County in, in planning area 85A and Council District 9. Slide three, please. More specifically, the site is located on the east side of Branch Avenue, south of Akakik and Brandywine Roads, and west of Old Brandywine Roads. Slide four, please. <clears throat> Subject property is within the CM and CSC zones in Brandywine. Slide five, please. This aerial photo illustrates the current condition of the property. The site currently has a vacant building occupying the, a portion of the property, but the remaining land wooded. The Hunt Marlowe Store and Casket Shop Historic Site is located directly to the east of this site across Old Brandywine Road. Slide six, please. The site is flat and contains no regulated environmental features. Slide seven, please. The Branch Avenue, Akatik Road, Brandywine Road interchange is classified as a master plan freeway and is currently undergoing extensive expansion. Slide eight, please. This bird's eye view further illustrates the current condition of the property, showing the progress of the surrounding roadway network improvements and the Hunt Marlow historic site on the right side of the screen. Slide nine, please. The application for this site proposes the development of a 3,484 square foot 7-Eleven food and beverage store with a gas station and a 982 square foot car wash. The food and beverage store will be located in the northwest corner with a car wash behind it, as shown here, uh, and the fuel canopy out front. All proposed development is located within the CM zone where, where these are all permitted uses subject to the approval of the detailed site plan, the findings for which can be found starting on page 7 of the staff report. <clears throat> Slide 10, please. Sidewalks are provided along the frontage and within the site, as seen here in beige, and includes marked crossings in the parking lot, contributing to the overall circulation on the site. This application is subject to the requirements of the landscape manual and shows full conformance. <clears throat> Slide 11, please. The applicant is proposing to use durable quality materials, including brick and stone, on the proposed food and beverage store building. A varied roof line is extended by an EFIS cornice capped with a dark bronze pre-finished metal cap. 
A stone sill is featured on all sides, tying into a stone tower on the northwest corner of the building, which will be capped with a dark bronze metal pyramid hip roof. The customer entrance to the store, located on the east facade of the building, is, is accented by a cantilevered metal canopy, which is located over the entrance doors and storefront windows. Cantilevered metal canopies are also featured over the faux backlit storefront windows on the north elevation. Three building mounted signs are shown, all displaying the 7 Eleven brand and all internally illuminated boxes. A signage table was not provided on the DSP. However, through analysis of the data provided, the signs proposed exceed the area allowed by the zoning ordinance. Conditions are provided in the staff report to demonstrate conformance. <clears throat> Slide 12, please. The car wash will be located immediately behind the store on the west side of the property and will also feature a mix of brick and stone with storefront windows on the facade facing Branch Avenue. The proposed gas, I'm sorry, slide 13, please. The proposed gas canopy will be a flat roof supported by two dark bronze pre-finished metal wrapped columns each uh, between each fuel dispenser aisle. The canopy fascia will be wrapped in a white internally illuminated cabinet with the corporate 7-Eleven logo provided on the north and south facade. The signature, the signature orange, green, and red horizontal bands are shown wrapping around the entire fascia. The canopy also includes an 18 square foot digital fuel price display on the east side. The sign area for the canopy has not been provided in a table showing performance, findings for which can be found on page six of the staff report and conditions hit therein. <clears throat> Slide 14, please. In addition to the building mounted signs, the applicant is proposing three freestanding signs, a pylon, a monument, and a directional. The pylon sign will be located on the northwest corner of the site, will be double-faced, and will include the fuel price display. The monument sign will be set on a brick pedestal and located in the northeast corner of the site. The directional sign will be located in the south, at the southeast entrance. All three freestanding signs will be double-faced, internally lit boxes. The zoning ordinance permits one freestanding sign on each of two parallel streets, which in this case allows a total of two signs. The staff report contains conditions to remove any signs not in conformance. <clears throat> slide 15, please. This slide, this slide depicts the view shed study showing the impacts this proposal may have on the adjacent Marlow Hunt store and casket shop historic site. On July 21st, 2020, the Historic Preservation Commission evaluated these impacts and recommended approval with no condition. The full, the full report, as Madam Chair indicated, can be found in your additional backup. By <clears throat> 16, please. The Type 2 Tree Conservation Plan, TCP2-026-2018-01, shows that the applicant meets the woodland conservation requirement of 1.99 acres by providing a combination of woodland preservation, on-site, and off-site conservation credits. <clears throat> the urban design staff recommends that the planning board adopt the findings of this report and approve detailed site plan DSP 19031 and TCP 2-026-2018-01 for 711 Branch Avenue, subject to the conditions contained in the staff report dated July 15, 2020. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very, very much. I appreciate it. Let's see if there's any questions at this point. Okay, um, Madam Vice Chair. She had to log off and back on. She froze up. Madam okay, Chair. okay, okay. Um, Commissioner Washington. No, no uh, questions, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, Commissioner Gervaldo. Oh. The only question I have is, is there any provision for bicycle racks? I didn't see it, so I may have missed it. Uh, there is actually not a provision for bicycle racks in this plan. Hey, well, I'll, I'll wait till Mr. Tedesco. They may want to proffer that. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if there are no other questions, and Mr. Tedesco, decide to let us see him. 
Okay. I turned on my camera. Okay. I, I figured it's been, it's been four and a half months. I've kept my camera off. I, I figured you had a Rip Van Winkle beard by now. Okay. Okay. All right, Mr. No. Tedesco, you're He's on. Got a fresh, got a chair. He's got a fresh pup. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission, um, plan work, uh, and, and the commission. For the record, Matthew Tedesco with the law firm of Matthew Hosey here on behalf of the applicant, 7-Eleven, Inc. Um, I know you did a roll call, but I'll just take an opportunity to introduce uh, the representatives from our team. Uh, Ms. Brianne Wilson, Laverne Okowski, um, although he may not be on anymore, Curtis Williams from 7-Eleven, uh, Nick Speech and Mira Ganser from Bowler Engineering, uh, Mike Lenhart with the Lenhart Traffic Consulting Group, and then Chantel Marino with EVI Consulting. Um, I think this legitimately may be the first time in my career we don't have any exhibits, we don't have any changes. Um, we are 100% in agreement with staff recommendations. Um, I think the, I think maybe one or two times I've done that, but this, those actually probably didn't even have any conditions. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember when that might have been. The last one was Norburn, but okay. staff didn't recommend any conditions, so I didn't have anything to change. This one we have a, a decent number of conditions, but we are in agreement 100% with all of them. Um, I have not consulted with my client, but I will uh, take liberty in response to um, the question with respect to bike racks. I don't think there's any objection for us to provide um, two inverted U-shaped bicycle racks, which I think can house up to four bicycles. I think that would be... Um, sufficient I, I believe there's room um nick's speech is on the line with bowler engineering if he could just double check that for me before i stick my foot in my mouth at the last hearing before recess but i so long as there's room which i presume there would be um commissioner i don't think we have a problem doing that if i can turn to nick's speech real quick just to confirm that yep not a problem we definitely can fit that okay great so with that, we so with that, the applicant would proffer two inverted U-shaped bicycle racks at a at a location uh, convenient uh, to the uh, to the store uh, at the time of certification. And with that, Madam Chair, the only thing that I would just add is I, I do want to thank Mr. Burke, um, the reviewer in this case. Um, we had I think sufficient back and forth and a, a good working environment with respect to getting this application to you all um, which um, I'm happy to say that that resulted in in conditions that we are all are in agreement with and I thank him for that I also want to take an opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Stabler uh, she did a fantastic job presenting this application to the Historic Preservation Preservation Commission on July 21st um, I jokingly said to the commission that if Jill Kozak ever needed anybody to pinch hit on an urban design case, that they could call upon Dr. Stabler for presenting a detailed site plan. She did a fantastic job, which I think is reflected in the fact that the Historic Preservation Commission recommended approval with no conditions. And so I do want to thank her as well as the Historic Preservation Commission for its review and recommendations in this case. Um, the only thing I'd say is I believe I had your first case on March 26th that was a virtual case, and now I have your last one before recess. I want to thank you for all the ups and downs and the, that we had a lot of cases in between there, and you all and everyone on this line, I think there's 29 people, many of whom are your staff, uh, deserve a very uh, enjoyable, restful August recess. So with that, I thank you, and we appreciate all that you do, and thank you for having these hearings virtually. And we're going to take that recess, too. Okay. <laughs> um, let me just double-check. Thank you, Mr. Tedesco. Let me just double-check Mr. Uh, Mr. Berger and Ms. Stabler to see if they have anything that they wanted to add. Uh, we have nothing to add. Good answer. We, <laughs> not, we appreciate, nothing we to appreciate, add. Sure. We uh, appreciate Mr. T Tedesco's okay. compliments. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So with that, Madam is there a motion? Oh, who's on? Who won? Ma this is Noel Smith speaking from the transportation okay, section. Okay, sorry. Okay. I just wanted to add um, to Mr. Geraldo's um, comments. There are two bicycle racks proposed on the site plan. So. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Okay, thank you. With that, Great. is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve DSP-19031 and TCP-2-026-2018 01 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report. Commissioner Geraldo seconds the motion. Okay, um, discussion. Hearing none, 
Okay, Commissioner Aye. Washington. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Oh, I'm thinking, thinking. You better think, think fast. Okay. Um, okay, I, so I don't see um, Vice Chair Bell. I think she may have called in, but I'm not sure. But I'm going to go ahead um, and say at this point the ayes have it 3 0. And I, have, I do have something to say. Um, as we are, are about to um, go on our um, August recess, it is imperative. I feel compelled to say thank you to everyone. Um, this has been going to virtual uh, so unexpectedly um, in this COVID crisis, but we we have held up our, our part, and I mean, that includes everybody. That includes the planning department, who's done, done a great job. That includes Kenny over here. That includes Ryan over here. Our IT people have stepped up to the plate in a big way. This, this is not Kenny's normal job. He stepped up in a big way. Our chairman's office has been phenomenal. Our technical hearing writers have been uh, working like demons to get everything done on time. Our, um, our, our copy center, all, all of our, our, our uh, James Hunt, you deserve a huge round of applause. I mean, you have, we don't always see you. You've been working so very, very hard to keep it all together. All of our chiefs, all of our, our team. Um, our, our planning director and our, our, our uh, uh, deputy planning director, acting deputy planning director, um, everybody in the chairman's office who is stepping in, they've come in and they've rotated in and out, in and out, in and out, just to keep it all flowing. Um, our planning board administrator, Jessica Jones, everybody's worked so very, very hard. Our planning board has rocked. Our planning board has rocked. I mean, I got to give it up to our Vice Chair Bailey. She has just been awesome. Our Commissioner Washington has been awesome, awesome. And she's not even bugging me about when is the time to eat. She's just been awesome. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Geraldo has just been awesome. Our development community has been awesome. You have worked with us. You've demonstrated the, the, uh, the flexibility. We've all had to have tremendous flexibility here to adapt and work with us and to propel the business of Prince George's County forward because we're, the county is taking a huge hit. And the applications that we have approved, so long as they're in compliance with the law and so long as that you're working with us and working with the citizens, that helps the county. Um, and that helps our tax base, and that tax base goes to schools and other services that we need. So that's so imperative during this time. Um, I want to thank our legal counsel. I want to thank David Warner. I want to thank Deborah Borden. I want to thank Peter Goldsmith for doing such a great job. And I want to thank the citizens. The citizens have participated tremendously. Whether they call in, they're sending in their exhibits, we've all had to adapt to a whole different new normal. But and, and while trying to remain safe, but just to move things forward, I, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to everyone. And that goes even to you, Mr. Tedesco, especially for today. And I'm going to thank my mama on her birthday, her, her 101st heavenly birthday, for, for helping to guide this and make this day go so smoothly. I know she was looking out for her daughter. So with that, I want to, um, I just ask for everyone to please stay safe. Um, this is a long way from, this COVID crisis is a long way from over. And there will be repercussions from, for years to come, uh, financial repercussions, health repercussions for years and years to come. So please stay safe. Look out for one another. Look out for your loved ones. Stay resilient. Stay woke. Get into good trouble. And remain ever hopeful as we strive to get through these challenging um, times together and enjoy and nurture yourself during our August break because we're going to need it come September. Mm -hmm. So I, I will spare you all from singing See You in September because I don't want to do that to you. But I am going to tell you, I am going to ask Mr. Hunt, Mr. Hunt. Oh, and, um, well, let me ask if the, anyone else has anything to say. And, I, I'd like to say something, Madam Chair. I want to thank you and all of our planning board staff for the tremendous work that you did in making this uh, possible for us to continue to hold our planning board meetings. I know it wasn't easy. I know from uh, the difficulty that the courts have had in scheduling okay. it and, and putting it together. And so I just can attribute it to you, your leadership, as well as our staff. Thank you so much. And everybody, please wear your mask. Yes, indeed. And Socially distance.
This is not fake news. This is real. And if we're ever going to get over it, we need cooperation from everyone. The CDC. Yeah, and I just want, I, I was going to, to say something very similar to Commissioner Geraldo, uh, but I will, uh, let me just say that I too want to add my, my uh, thanks to you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, it is actually, it's been tough. We've had to come together, um, but it's actually been delightful. Uh, you know, we are very unique in terms of, you know, how we work together as commissioners. And I consider, you know, the developers, the citizens kind of all a part of our uh, beloved planning board family. And uh, it's just been, it's been phenomenal. And we could not have done what we have been able to do over these last several weeks and months without your stellar, superb leadership. And happy birthday to your mom as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, and I do want to take a, a take a moment um, to um, I, I, I commended all the commissioners, but I want to commend um, Will Dorner, Commissioner Will Dorner as well. He was unable to be with us right now. We were keeping him in our and his family in our thoughts and prayers. I'll leave it at that for now. Um, and uh, Matt, did you want to? You said what you needed to say. I guess I don't know if you had anything else. But with that, I, I would just, yeah, I would just echo everything that the commissioner, uh, planning board members, and you, Madam Chair, have said. Um, I, I may be the only one left from the development community on today's hearing, and I, um, you guys deserve, as well as your staff, a tremendous amount of praise and um, thank you so much. I think Tom Haller said it earlier. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what uh, the future would have held if you guys didn't take the proactive initiative to start these virtual hearings um, for not only for the development community, uh, selfishly speaking, but for, for the county as a whole and all of its citizens to continue to move these important projects forward and generate income for the county. So I, I couldn't thank you enough. Um, as I mentioned before, a well, especially well-deserved break uh, starting hopefully in the next five minutes. And uh, I thank you and I look forward to seeing you all in September. Make it, make it the next two minutes. Okay, so <laughs> with that, um, Thank you so much, everybody. And I will tell you, it has been a special shout out to the entire team because it has been anything but easy. It has not been easy in any way, shape, or form, but we did it together. So with yes. that, Mr. Hunt, Mr. Hunt, yes, madam. is there any additional business to come before the planning board today? There are no additional business items before the planning board today. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. and guess what? Yeah. Planet Board is adjourned. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you. See you in September. Take good care.